We're good. We're good. <laughs> <laughs> What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Big Brown Breakdown. It is Tuesday, 12.03 on this lovely Los Angeles afternoon, May 9th, up in this bitch from the Fire and Kids Studios. This is the Big Brown Breakdown. It's been a busy week. <clears throat> Tonight I have stand-up at the Comedy Store. Crazy lineup. I think Joey Diaz, Rogan, uh, I mean, the list goes on and on. Uh, let me just look. I mean, it's a crazy lineup. It, it. I think that bitch is sold out, but it is. Let me see. Joey Diaz, Burt Kreischer, Tiffany Haddish, Joe Rogan, Al Madrigal, Sam Tripoli, Joe Bartnick. It's tonight, man. Sam Tripoli puts on a hell of a show. That Al guy's hilarious. He's just on uh, Rogan's podcast. He's brilliant, man. I like that guy. He's really cool. Um, yeah, looking forward to that. I, um, out of all the shows I've ever done, it doesn't matter how many times I do it. I get more nervous for the comedy store than anywhere. Could be a thousand people fighting the kid. Could be a live Big Brown Breakdown, sold out, uh, you know, comedy store and La Jolla or pa- Ice House, whatever it is. When I'm doing uh, a stand-up spot at the comedy store, it's just it's a different level of nerves. Why the comedy store? Because you know that's like uh, you know that's like that's I mean it's the who's who. That's where the pros go to you know get get their sets kind of you know hammered down, man. So I'm up there, you know, it's monsters. Like like the other night I was there, and uh, I was on at ten o'clock, and before me it went Joe Rogan, Dane Cook. And the way it works is they call it, um, like, you, there's no host, so you're just tagging the other guy in. So when you're done with your set, you grab the mic and you go, all right, everyone, that's my time. Now our next comic, you guys might know him from, you know, Triggered, Fear Factor, um, the UFC, ladies and gentlemen, Joe Rogan. And I introduce him, and he comes up, right? Yeah. Well, Dane Cook had to introduce me. Okay. And so, so Joe Rogan introduced Dane Cook. Dane Cook has to introduce me. I, um, you know, it, uh, it's 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 nothing. No one knows. I'm not breaking news here. You know, Dane Cook. Everyone's like, ah, he's kind of a little standoffish, man. Oh, I he, didn't know. he could be a bad dude. Like I've heard all these stories. I never judge anyone until I get see it myself. Usually, if it's like you know my brother or someone really close to me and they're like that's a bad guy i'm like all right, he's probably a bad guy but if it's just hearsay and it's like gossip i'm, ne- I'm like all right whatever because i'm sure some people say some horrible stuff about me but unless you meet them yourselves you shouldn't make judgments so i didn't say anything my brother's with me because he was in town for the our ice house show mm-hmm. so i walk into the green room and it's just dane and he's there writing some notes and there's just you know he's drinking water and it's just him in there usually it's pretty packed it's just him I'm like oh shit there's dane cook i've never seen him like that before yeah and so i walk in i go oh dane what's up brother i'm I'm on after you man he goes he kind of just goes oh cool but not like very warm like <laughs> yeah. he was but the thing is he was busy he was into his work he was going over his notes which yeah. i get that man i hate being bothered before a show and he just goes oh cool man and then just looks down like ah man he is a dick kind of like everyone told me this sucks man and so i just didn't say anything he goes on. So when he goes on, I usually have between 15, 20 minutes to get my mind right. I'll go over things. Commissar posted a video of me pacing back and forth backstage. I saw that one, yeah. Yeah, so I pace back and forth. I just go over my set and get out the nerves and whatever. That helps me get my mind right. Yeah. Just take mass mass amounts of brain, uh, alpha brain. <laughs> and um, so I'm in the back. And then Dane Cook, he has to announce me. And he, I, I won't repeat what he said, but he gave me the best intro i've ever heard sweet from yeah i couldn't believe it man <laughs> and, when I, and we, so i went on stage he did the intro and it was just so special man and then we hugged shake hands i just went dude all this on stage went dude you're you're a goddamn legend i love you man he goes cool right on man have fun out there <laughs> i was like what the hell is going on who would have cool. thought dane how the fuck did i get to dane cook introducing me at awesome. the comedy store it was cool man it was a special experience i wish someone would got a pick of that Something I wish they're showing just like, oh, let me get this. But you know, if the, the comedy store photographer, like, that's that's every night, yeah. I mean, Joe Rogan introduced Dave Chappelle, Dave Chappelle introduced Chris Rock, Chris Rock introduced Bill Burr, Bill Burr, introduced, you know, it's like this. So, that, like, what 
fucking get it next time yourself. I'm like, nah, I get that. I wish I had it because I'm, yeah, I don't know. I like that stuff. But, uh, yeah, that was a special night, man. It's cool because my brother hasn't seen me perform at the comedy store. And then, uh, man, the Ice House, again, just the, I mean, the ice, how cool is the Ice House? Special Love place. It. Love it. Love it. <laughs> Love it. It's Love a good it. time. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm back there in June. I'll announce. I don't know if tickets are on sale yet, but I'm, just, I'm doing residency there. So, uh, what, it started in um, April, May. Oh, no, I'm sorry. It started in May, May yeah. June. Right? Wait, no. no. So sorry. We did eight, one before. We did, we did, April. We did one in April. Yeah. We did one in May. And we do one in July. Not June? Oh, we do one. Sorry. So May, April, June. May, April, should, May, June. <laughs> April, May, June. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. April, April, May, May June. June. Jesus Christ. And then we'll take it from there. But, yes, yeah, so I do one at the beginning of every month, uh, Wednesday there. And uh, June's our last one. Then we'll, we'll take it from there. But I love doing it, man. It's oh, a yeah. good time. The crowd's freaking great. The crowd's are great. Yeah, Ice House is amazing. Amazing, amazing. I love you guys for that. Um, what else, man? I, I moved in a new crib, so I had uh, I had people over. It was my girl's birthday, Cinco de Mayo, Canelo Chavez fight. I have, you know, my whole team there, my manager, my agent, all my girls' family, everyone, their moms at my house. I mean, it's 40 people deep. Nothing crazy, you know, we're not in our 20s. There's just everyone's there just you know, I, I cater Chipotle. There's all this food. There's drinks, and the fight is a fucking stinker. Mm. It just, I mean, it's, if you're not into, like, I can watch it and I'm not bored. But if you're not into boxing, if you just came for the spectacle, I mean, they were like, they're just everyone's just so over by round probably five. Everyone's like, God, this sucks, man. And I was like, Oh my! I felt responsible for it. I was like, oh my god! But I like to I have to rewatch it because I like to hear all the the corner men. I'm like, what are, what is the corner saying to Chavez Jr. right yeah. now? What the fuck are they saying? They need to say, listen, what you think you're doing in your head, what you think what you think you're doing right, go the opposite direction. Literally, what you think, do opposite right now. We got to do something like this. You can't fight like this, man. You just can't do this. And then, you know, I thought Canelo, he's getting, he's getting better. He's improving every fight, every fight, every fight. And then they do this weird WWE Undertaker walkout of Triple G. You know, finally that's happened. And um, I just, it was a little gimmicky, but I'm so crunk for the fight. I don't hate on it because it's like, oh, shit, this is actually happening. It's September 16th, this shit is going yeah. down. And it's the ba best fight of my generation. I can't. I mean, as far as both guys are really in their prime, you know, there's arguments say, well, Triple G was better a year ago or two years ago, but really, you know, 35, coming off two toughest wins of his career, Canelo, prime age, it's just, I mean, it's one for the ages, man. And I hope, hopefully, it's such a good close fight, there's like a trilogy, you know those classic trilogies? Like, you turn on, you see just these classic fights, that's what you want out of that, that's what boxing needs. And Canelo's uh, opened, I think, Five to one or six to one underdog, I, I don't. Get, I don't get it, man. I really don't. I, I'm not drinking that Kool Aid. I think Triple G is great. I think if you look at his competition, and and I'm a Triple G fan, huge fan. He's you know definitely top five favorites, definitely top two favorites to watch, top three. But you look at his competition, especially his last two fights, he struggled a little bit. People go, well, he was just messing, you know, he was just me messing with Brooks. He wasn't, you know, he didn't take it serious, stuff like he was trying to put on a performance. I don't care what you say, he struggled in that fight. He ended up putting him away, but you know, and the guy who's massively undersized, he struggled on the inside. And his last fight, uh, with Jacobs, God, some people thought he lost. Mm -hmm. So any you know, and those are the two toughest guys outside that. I mean, Lemieux, the argument is, well, look what he did to Lemieux. True, and again, I'm a huge fan of Lemieux, but um, Lemieux's style is perfect for Canelo. Canelo uses his jab to dismantle him, and Lemieux's not a he's not a calculated technician. He ju he's just not. So that's a perfect fight for him. So that's probably his most impressive win. But other than that, man, I just you look at Canelo, you look at him. I don't see why Canelo's such a big underdog. And I wish I would have jumped on it because the public's jumping on Canelo too. I saw Oscar De La Hoya on uh, ESPN this morning talking about it. And um, man, I'm just—it's such a good fight. But that—that—that that, that, the thing fucked up my party. The <laughs> thing ruined the party, man. It was not cool. It was not cool at all. But uh, whatever, whatever. What what can you do? This week's huge because UFC 
211, the by far the best pay per view of the year. By far. I mean, this thing, you know, there's cards where you can be like, God, I hope it delivers. This one, there's no way it doesn't deliver. I'm not trying to jinx it. I know, like I'm that. scared now. There's no way it doesn't deliver. There's too many superstars on this. There's too many good matchups. There's just, it's great, man. It's such a great freaking card. We'll obviously break that down. And then today we've got Lorenz Larkin on. Uh, if you guys, obviously you guys know who he is, but he <clears throat> was in Strike Force. Mm-hmm. He was in UFC. That's probably where you guys know him. And then he just recently was a free agent and signed on over to Bellator, where he's fighting at Mass Square Garden um, in end of June. Can you give me the exact date on that, Chin? Yeah. End of June. And uh, he's fighting Douglas Lima for the welterweight world championship so he's on that stacked pay-per-view with chael sonan wanderlei silva fedor mitrione uh, chandler you got douglas lima uh versus lorenz larkin um aaron pico who's that freak wrestler and then on the undercard you got phil davis on uh, live on spike tv you got shinzo fighting that whole card is a banger but yeah so <clears throat> lorenzo's a guy i've wanted to have on for a while now we finally uh schedule wise got it uh on the books and he's coming in today. And I think it's interesting because he's one of the guys who, you know, in this new era of the UFC and what Bellator is doing, you know, he saw all the cards on the table and decided to go with Bellator. So I'm fascinated by that right now. I think not enough people are talking about that. And um, you're talking about a guy who you look at Lorenz Larkin's record and, you know, in strike force, you know, he lost, he's fought everyone, man. He lost to King Mo, but it was overturned because King Mo test positive. Tainted, you know, he, he took some shit. Test positive, so that didn't count. Then he fights Robbie Lawler. He got thrown to the wolves right away. Then he fights Robbie Lawler. Beats Robbie Lawler. Then he's f- supposed to fight Luke Rockhold, but it just doesn't fall through, and then the UFC buys him out. Then he goes to the UFC. He starts off a little rough, and then you just see him gaining this momentum, gaining this momentum, and he is a freak, man. Rogan and I were talking about this. Rowan goes, God, I, I hope Lorenz doesn't go to Bellator, man, because I love watching him fight, and he is one of the best welterweights on the planet. And I said, I don't know what he's going to do, man. I really don't. I've, I've heard both ways, and obviously you guys know, you know he signed with Bellator, and he's fighting on their biggest card of all time for a title shot against Douglas Lima. So, I mean, I think that was kind of an easy sway his direction, you know, because he had some issues as far as – promoting matchups and stuff like that. So when Bellator goes, hey, we'll put you on Mass Square Garden, I'm sure it's a good deal. For all the sponsors you can handle, and you'll fight for a uh, world title. Because you look at the guys he's beat. I mean, Lorenz is a he's a beast, man. So I'm excited to get him in there. But um, there's a lot, a lot of uh, MMA news going um, around the just world. Just for the man. listeners, it's June 24. The June Bellator 24. Card. And uh, I cannot confirm or deny I might. Be working for Spike and Bellator in New York. And there might, there might be a big brown breakdown live at Gotham Comedy Club in New York City that same week as well. But that is not for sure. There's, it's rumored. When, it, when it's official, I'll let you guys know. But that's what's going on. And uh, I'm excited for Lynch to come in here. That guy's an absolute m- 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 monster. What do you got, Chin Chin? All right. First current event, main or MMA event is <clears throat> so Anderson Silva. We talked about it last time how he said that if they don't give us, if they don't give me and Yoel an interim title fight, then he's he's probably just going to retire or just call it quits, be done with it. And then Dana White reacted by saying, if you're going to ever mention that R word, retire. Then you should probably retire. Yeah, yeah. So I agree with Dana on this. You know, he uh, he's he's right, but it, it. I agree with Dana. As soon as that thought of retirement's in your head, you're probably you know you you probably should have been done at least a few fights ago. You know, because you're on your last leg. My my only argument for Anderson here is he's a legend. He, I would let a legend go out on his own terms. If he wants to fight, I I don't think it's fair to give him an interim title. Like, what are you going to do with that? Anderson's going to get that, and then what? And then it's this weird belt, and don't give him an interim title. I, when I say on his own terms, n- not including interim titles and belts, give him that good matchup, fun matchup, 
Uh, but it doesn't have to be for an interim title. But let him have some say, man. What he's done for the company, you're talking about one of the greatest, some argue the greatest of all time to grace the octagon. You, you can't just say, ah, sorry, deal didn't work out. Kelvin fell out. This fell out. We can't make a fight. You should get out of here. Like, you can't just dis- diminish what Anderson has done for you and your company because he's a huge reason why you guys sold for 400 or whatever the fuck it was, four gigillion dollars, you know? Yeah. He's a huge reason for it. What that guy laid down the groundwork, uh, you know, that gave the UFC its boost. He's the, he's the groundwork on why UFC is so big in Brazil. He, you know, he's, he's one of the pioneers. So you have to treat him a- accordingly. You can't just dismiss a guy like that. I agree with Dana when he goes, if you're even thinking about retirement, you should probably quit in this business because you're going to get hurt. Agree. But it's Anderson Silva. If he wants to fight, you, you owe it to him to give him the proper send-off. Fair. And I, I'm pretty sure he just said, like, he's, his wording was, I'm done. If they don't give it to me, then I'm done. So I'm not sure he actually said the word retire. Well, it sounds it sounds like he's he's testing them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So I feel like he's just kind of It sounds like he's kind of like I'm going to yeah. if you, if you don't give me my way, I'm going to leave and Dana's like, "Cool, leave." That and that's the state we're in these days with the UFC. They they, you know, it's like I don't know, you know, how much control Dana has anymore, how much he really cares anymore. You know, all he really talks about is Conor McGregor, you know, the Conor and Mayweather fight. So, you know, you you're it's it's interesting to see you know how much does he really care. I don't think he can be bothered by it. I'm, they, yeah, probably. I guess leave, man. Yeah, cool. Well, I'm out here. Cool, man. Have fun. What? Mm-hmm. That's that's what we're doing. You think they'd be fine without him? I mean, I'm sure they'd be fine without him. But do you think they really fine. really want to hold on to him? No. Mm-mm. Wow. No, I think it's you know that 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 ship sailed. Um, yeah, they could help him sail off a little faster and give him yeah. a proper send-off but um no i don't think it was like some huge draw that they need no gotcha. and they're treating him that way think if connor said that you would you even see dana say oh well cool leave man you would not see that yeah I wonder how they they'd be, they're like though. a so so when it's so it's like uh you know with anson silva they're treeating him like you know he's he, he met you know Dana's the husband. Anderson Silva's just this kind of old, you know, she used to be hot. He had four kids with her. And he's like, ah, I'm good, man. Here, here, just take this money and leave. And Connor's this new fucking dime piece, side piece, you know, just, no, 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 come here, baby. We'll figure it out. I promise you, I'm going to get you home, everything, you know. So there's all these promises over here. And Anderson's just that old, weathered MILF who won't go away right now, who's just hanging around. And they're just like, uh, get out of here, man. He's like, no, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So that's what's going on. It's a bummer. <laughs> Perfect analogy. Yep. All right, so this fight that he was supposed to fight in 212, Anderson Silva was talking to a, a Brazilian like webpage outlet for sports or something like that, and he said that he's, he's going to remove himself, or he has removed himself from the actual card. So I'm wondering, how is that, how is that even possible? How do you just not be on the card? Uh, I mean, it's Anderson Silva. You know, you can tell he's at the last leg of the kind of the career where he's like, I'm, I'm just going to get out. Like, yes, I'm giving me a matchup. I'm not going to fight on this. There's not enough time. So you can just leave. Yeah, you can be like, no, I'm not doing this. It's Anderson okay. Silva. So I think, you know, I haven't given him a proper matchup. I haven't given him what he's want. I think he's also testing them. And I think his feelings are going to be hurt. Mm-hmm. I really do. You know, when, when guys test the UFC, unless you're Conor McGregor, unless you're Ronda Rousey before she got murked twice in a row, unless, you know, you're a uh, Brock Lesnar, really, you know, those are the three only names I can think of. Unless you're them, when you test them, it really doesn't work out for you. I can't, you know, I, I hope it works out for Al Iquinta, but I don't, I don't know, man. So I keep checking my phone. I'm just waiting for a. Uh... All good. I'll just get the other one loaded up real quick. Let's do it. The next Let me one. Do this to you so I don't keep checking it. The next one is the official poster for, for Aldo versus Holloway, <clears throat> and let's take a look at it. If anyone on, if just, just UFC listeners, two twelve, yeah. June third. Okay. If listeners haven't seen it already, it's Aldo. And Holloway on the poster, but then half the top page is Aldo, normal side up, and then half of the bottom page is 
Holloway upside down. It hurts my eyes. I mean, for sure, get off our nut sacks, whoever uh, does this stuff. We did uh, a firing the kid like this, but it was like a uh, the Joker pl- tra- trading card, like the Joker ca- deck of cards. You know where you, oh, okay, you get like a Joker, actual, or like a, a king card. card? Yeah, yeah, we did that with Brian and I, and you know we're, we're a comedy duo. It's fucking. He, what is this? And if you're if you're fucking Holloway, you're like, hey man, no one can even recognize me here. I'm upside down. God damn it! It's very confusing. I I just think I just it's, you know this goes with the same thing. You know, I know I sound like fucking uh, Peter Griffin on Family Guy. You know what really grinds my gears? But, you know, we keep going back to this about details. And, you know, they're, this goes back with the with Anderson Silva. He's, his feelings are going to be hurt when he realizes, they're like, yeah, we're good, man. See ya. Like when he thinks they're testing him and they actually care, his feelings are going to be hurt. Here, you know, it's, a, it's the same thing. You know, back in the day, what? They didn't let anything get past them. They posted... Uh, the, I think it was this fight, or no, they posted UFC 11 thing and had a picture of the wrong girl. I've mm. never seen that before, man. You're dealing with new people, the social media team, you know, they got rid of Shonda, um, and they just, they, they, they just don't know what they're doing. They literally don't know what they're doing. And that, who the, f- if I'm Dana, well, I don't know. I don't know how much control he has. If I'm anyone, I would go and like, what the fuck, man? We're trying to Holloway's supposed to be our next superstar. We want that Hawaiian market. He's upside down. We can't tell what the fuck it is. Are you, is this the same person that made the DC Rumble Johnson poster? We had Rumble huge and DC tiny when he was the champ. It's so strange, man. I just I just don't think they understand the business. I just don't think they get it. The people who were there who built this thing are like, what the? They're probably rolling over, you know, just like, what the fuck is going on right now? If I'm Holloway, I'm just like, oh, my God. You can't be bothered with it because you want to focus on your train stuff like that. But if there's ever time to mouth off and and voice your concerns and get away with it, not that they're going to listen, but it would be now. Because they just, they're like, what? Who's Max Holloway? God damn it. He's your interim champ, man. He lost to Conor McGregor by decision and had a, you know, it was a, that was his last loss. He's a monster. He how, did how's a, this mar- how, how can you market that? He did take a route of trying to play with this because he wrote on Twitter something like, I'm going to turn the game upside down or on its head to respond to the poster. Yeah, man, I hate to tell you, even when you're champ, you might be flipped upside down too. We don't know. Now, does he make it so – because – all you have to do, the way they make it looks like, were they trying to save money because they do cutouts? Because you can make this, cut it down the middle, and then just have him sign one side, have Aldo save the other. Is it budget cuts? I know they're trying to do cuts, but Jesus Christ. I mean, yeah, because he can, because what you can do, he can just screenshot it, flip it upside down, and I'll just post it that way. Because the language on the bottom is even made to be upside down. Yeah. You could fold it. It's very strange. For a po- for for a post, how are you going to recognize a guy? Have you ever seen that in any other league? Have you ever seen that no. in any other facet? It was weird. I mean, Brian, and I did it fucking around, but I posted mine right side up. Brian posted his right side up. But when you have one voice, one thing to blast out, and it's this, it's just rough. Poor Holloway. There's so many cool things he could have done with this poster. Him being from Hawaii, him being from Brazil. That I mean. What else you got? Be All right, cool, the next man. one. The next one is this. Tony Ferguson. He didn't just go off on Nate. He went off on some other, like Conor McGregor. and On what? Calling him bitch for not taking the fight. Well, especially for Nate Diaz because he says Nate Diaz was offered a fight with him. That's correct. For an interim title. Yeah. And then Nate initially agreed and then said, no, the terms weren't right, so he, he didn't want to take the fight anymore. Mm-hmm. So then, in this article, he's just saying that uh, he should try to go playing tennis instead of because instead of fighting because this is a fighting sport. Um, it, wh- who who did he do this interview with? Do we know? Was it on Ariel Ferguson? Yeah, Ariel's show. Um, 
I mean, I, I like that Ferguson's coming out. We're actually going to have him on the show. I like that he's voicing more. I, th- I think it's the way to go, but um, it's, all, it's all good. It's the right play for Ferguson because what, what Ferguson needs to do is be, he needs to be talked about because who's out of McGregor, out of Nate Diaz, who's the one guy we're not talking about? Out of McGregor, Diaz, Khabib, who's the one guy? And Ferguson. Tony Ferguson, who's the one guy no one's talking about? Ferguson. I haven't since this. I haven't heard a thing. He's the one who gets fucked over out of all everybody. Khabib fucked himself. Conor McGregor's busy with Floyd Mayweather. You know what I'm saying? And Nate doesn't. He's turning down fights. The one who's getting screwed over all this is Tony Ferguson. So it's good he he went on and, and did a show, and now we're talking about him. But he's the guy who should just be like, "What the fuck? What are we doing, man?" Khabib's eating tiramisu, missing weight. The, missed that huge fight. Nate Diaz takes a fight, leaves the fight. Conor McGregor wants to be a boxer now. What about me, man? What about give me someone? So I don't. I, I feel bad for him because he's you know he's he's right up there skill wise, one of the best fighters in the world. But you know, no, not a lot of people know his name, even though he's the Ultimate Fighter winner. Even though he's you know had some great fights. You know, he dismantled Dos Anjos. And he has this huge fight with Khabib, but to his, you know, to his unknowingly doing, Khabib fucking doesn't make weight, passes out. It's just the one guy who gets screwed out of all this is Tony Ferguson. So I, there, it sounds like there's frustration there. Yeah, Tony Ferguson goes off on bitch Nate Diaz. You're in the wrong sport. Go try tennis. And with Nate, I don't know what he wants. You, you you listen to that interview with Ariel. I don't know what he wants. I really don't. He, you know, he was like, I, you know, I don't even want to fucking fight with Connor. I don't want the third fight. You don't. Then what do you want? The interim belt against Tony Ferguson. That sounds a cool deal. Don't want that. So I don't. I don't know what it is. Maybe they've made enough money where it's just it's not important to them anymore. Hopefully, you know, those guys deserve it. But uh, Nate Diaz versus Tony Ferguson. You know, Nate's probably an underdog in that fight. Yeah, I agree. That's a tough fight for Nate. A tough fight for Connor. Tony Tony Ferguson is the you know the toughest guy in that division. Uh, you know, against Khabib, I, I would go back and forth, back and forth. Who's going to win that fight? Um, but for out of everyone we're talking about, Tony gets screwed over. Mm. Connor's going to make his money. Stay. He's he's on ESPN every goddamn day. I watch that show every day. Khabib fucked himself. We'll, he'll figure that out. But that's on him. Nate Diaz, he's good, man. He's on, you know, Anthony Bourdain. He's doing this. He's, you know, still in the MMA news because everyone loves him. No one talks about Tony Ferguson. He needs to do as many shows as he can, talk as much shit as he can to someone bites. That's, unfortunately, I know we hate this. Unfortunately, that's the business we're in now. If you, just your skills, if you want to be the best 155er in the world, not named Conor McGregor or Nate Diaz, you got you, to do something to get our attention. You just can't train. You just can't beat people up. It sucks. I get it, man. You got to do something. You got to come up with something, man. This is a start. Bitch Nate Diaz, your wrong sport. Go try tennis, Conor McGregor, all that stuff. Here we go. Mm-hmm. He's not, now he's getting up. He should just keep going. Keep going to someone bites. Do we want to see him fight? He should make guarantees. Make promises what would happen to Nate if he gets in there. Make promises what would happen to Conor if he gets in there. Talk about how Khabib fucked him. Get your story out, man. But when you get fucked and you just go away and we don't hear how long ago was that? A while ago. Last week. No, I'm talking about remember when when he's supposed to fight Khabib. Oh, that was a while ago, yeah. We haven't heard from him since. Mm. Forever. And now I'm like, oh yeah, there he is. The best one fifty five in the world that we forgot about. It sucks, man, but that's what we're in. His management needs to just have him going. Going. I'm pretty his manager's the same manager as Connors. Yeah, that that was weird. Dude. Hey man. Help them. Come on, Big Round Breakdown. Million listeners. We got a million. Get your voice out. Go on, Ariel. Go do do whatever you got to do. Go. There's a lot of other. Go on. Fox is right here. He's a local kid. Go on Fox. Go on UFC tonight and talk shit. I know he was on there like demonstrating Darth jokes and stuff, but don't go on there and be a gentleman. Go on there and be a fucking savage. We're like, oh my God, that guy is so intense. Then you look at his highlights, you're like, holy smokes. Like they're, 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 they need to have a game plan for him. They're mismanaging him right now. He's the best 155 in the world who can't get a fucking fight, who doesn't have a title. Well, it seems like he's he's starting to do it now. And I apologize. This is actually from his interview 
on Submission Radio, and he was referring to Nate Diaz's interview with Ariel. That's oh, gotcha. a, that bonus. That episode. makes sense. Gotcha. All right, moving on. Oh, we already talked about this sort of. He didn't want said, to take the. Mm-hmm. He didn't want to take the Ferguson fight. Nate Diaz didn't want to take the Ferguson fight because it's for a fake title. Well, that's one of the reasons why Nate Diaz gave out that he didn't want to fight him. You you know what I think is going on, and I and I agree with Nate on this. Mm-hmm. I think I think Nate versus Tony Ferguson is a worse matchup for Nate versus Conor McGregor at fifty five. Tony Ferguson a fucking nightmare to deal with. There's a lot of things you got to worry about, and with his mentality, his size at the division, it's a very very tough fight for anyone, including Khabib, Nate, or Conor. I'm not putting down Nate in the least bit. If I'm Nate. And this is what I think he's doing, and I'm sure he'll correct me if I'm wrong. Nate wants the the big, the huge last fight payday is Conor McGregor three mm-hmm. at 55 for the world title. Nate's ego won't let him say that. His bad boy image won't let him admit that. So he goes, "Fuck that! I don't need him. I don't need to do anything." Deep down inside, he's waiting for that go. Because Tony versus Nate. That's not breaking pay-per-view records. Tony versus Nate ain't breaking fight night records, which is crazy because that's a hell of a fight. Yeah. But let's just talk. Let's just call it like it is. Those aren't going to get you the payday you're looking for. The only fight that will get you the payday you're looking for is Conor McGregor three at fifty-five for an actual title. You guys fight at seventy. That's not even Conor's weight. There's no belt on the line. Think how big those are. Now think about the actual trilogy fight for a belt. Legit shit. Huge. Whether the Floyd fight happens or not, the, all the public freaking outcry for that, and then you get this fight. Biggest. I, I you know, I'd be willing to say Nate Diaz versus Conor McGregor trilogy for the legit 155 World Championship is the biggest fight in UFC history. You don't think Nate's team knows that? You don't think Conor McGregor knows that? You think Tony or Khabib are going to get a shot at this? No. Nate knows this. Mm -hmm. Nate's not a dumb guy. He's not. They know exactly what they're doing. He's playing it just right. The fighter in Nate accepted the Tony Ferguson fight. Nate's not scared of anyone. The fighter in Nate accepted that fight. Someone got in his ear and went, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know if you take this fight... And in some weird world, you lose that Conor McGregor trilogy fights out the window, my man. That's gone. There's no rush. What? So you beat Tony Ferguson. What's that do for your career? So you have an interim belt. So I guess that interim versus the legit Conor belts. No one's still going to take you seriously as a champion. Conor has the belt. We saw him murk fucking Eddie Alvarez, and then right off the sunset and do this Floyd Mayweather press tour. His team knows, man. So when like. As a purist, I'm like, oh, my God, Nate Diaz or Tony Ferguson? That's a fucking fight. Tony Ferguson is just as skilled as anyone in the world, has the same mentality as a Nate Diaz, and is so game. You know, it's such a great fight. The businessman in me goes, oh, no, 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 don't do that, Nate. Please don't do that. Hold off, brother. Hold off. Even if it's a year from now, it's still the biggest fight in UFC history. Does that make sense? Yeah. Like that goes into what I was going to talk about in the next one, too. I'll try to do it real quick. So Dana White said that he's not sure how much Nate Diaz is worth without Connor, and he's not sure he could even sell pay-per-views or not make a big difference in pay-per-view vibes. But it seems as though he's just being smart with the Connor thing and wanting to get that fight because it'll be huge, but he's still got to be worth a decent amount of pay-per-view, pay-per-view buys, right? Um... Yes and no. Like I said, Tony Ferguson versus Nate Diaz isn't a isn't a and this hurts me to say this, it, but it is what it, it's not me. I fuck, I buy every fucking pay per view. Nate Diaz versus Tony Ferguson is not a bank buster. It's just it's not. It's not gonna it's not gonna break the the gates. It's unfortunately it's not. Hmm. That sucks. Dana's right in one aspect that saying you know I I but I see I don't. He's not he's not degrading Nate Diaz, which thank God. He goes, How much is Nate Diaz worth without Conor McGregor? I don't, I don't know. know. That's fair. Because remember Nate Diaz's path to where he's at now and how he has this huge draw and he's you know, he's making seven figures every fight. Remember he lost a fight 
then beat Michael Johnson, right? Yeah. Like he wasn't he wasn't a draw then. Like he wasn't a pay per view holder. We all love to see him fight in the purists and the 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 guys who are MMA you know aficionados and love MMA know these guys. But we he wasn't like one of the, the one of the billboards. He wasn't no. on all the billboards, all the nope. shows. Like you know, he's not selling you know too many kits. I assume. So. You know, he, he beats Michael Johnson, the best he's ever looked. Before that, he lost. Before that, you know, you look at his record. Bring up his record, brother. Renee Diaz. But, you know, it's it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a fascinating story because we know how game the Diaz brothers are. We know that Nate's been through these struggles. and We've been on it with him. That's why everyone loves Nate, and he's down to fight whoever, whenever. But you look at his record. So, you know, he, he kind of that, – that Dos Santos fight wasn't really – it wasn't that close – you know, it's a unanimous decision. Dos Anjos, his record 17 and 10. Some would say that's a little salty, even though he's beat everyone in the world. Before that, he dismantles Gray Maynard, who, you know, Gray's had his t- tough times. And before that, he, you know, he lost two in a row. Josh Thompson, head kick KO, first time we've seen Nate. A lot of people thought he was done. Mm. He loses to Ben Henderson, not a very competitive fight. You know, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Out of his last seven, he's lost four. It's true. Three and four. But and after that Connor fight, though. Like, but, the, but this is my point here. So he loses Dos Anjos, who goes on to become champ. There's no reason to hang your head there. And mm. Nate Diaz missed weight. Mm. He missed weight. And then he fights Michael Johnson. He looks great. Fight of the night. Yep. He goes three rounds. He beats the shit on Mike Johnson, who's on a hot path. And then he gets Conor McGregor. But before then, uh, granted, he's beat some great guys, but he was never... You know, he was never this huge draw. He was this weird subculture draw where the purists love him. They still do. And he he's kind of crossed over to that, you know, to the mainstream-ish. But he's a far cry from Conor McGregor, Ronda Rousey. But you look, and it's a fascinating story. It's it's great, man. And then also he loses, the you know, the majority decision to Conor on his last one. Um, you know, if that fight, you know, went another round, Conor could have been in trouble. But still. He's still lost. At the end of the day, it's still a loss. But to Dana's point, I got to agree. I don't know if we do Nate Diaz versus Khabib. I don't know if we do a Nate Diaz versus Tony Ferguson. It it sure as fuck ain't going over 700,000 buys. I see what you're saying. You know? And it sucks. But Nate versus Connor 3, the trilogy, the story, is the biggest pay-per-view of all time. Mark my words. That will be the biggest one of all time. Especially if they stack right, they play it right. You know, Nate obviously can sell the fight. Connor can sell the fight. Whatever happens with Connor, Floyd Mayweather, I mean, it just builds all this up. They should not fight anyone else. I know that's going to make some people upset. Who's it fuck over? This is this, I'm, this is the business side of things talking. If I'm, if I'm WME, this is what I'm doing. Who gets left behind? Tony First and Khabib. Those guys are fucked. That's why they need to figure it out. That's why Tony needs to cry wolf as much as he can on any fucking anyone who put a mic in front of his face who has a fall. But Dana's right. I, I agree with him. I don't, I don't. It sucks. It is what it is. We love the Diaz brothers. But to be a draw, it's fucking tough, man. To sell, pay, to get people to give you seventy dollars to watch you perform, it's tough. It's not a lot of guys. Yeah. Are you, are you are you a guy who's a huge like loyal DS fan? I'm not, but then ever since that Connor fight with him, I just you want to watch way more interested in him. So that's what makes me wonder if he did do a fight with with Ferguson or Khabib. Mm-hmm. Would it be? I know for me, we would buy it. You know, we'd buy the we'd buy the the fight, but would the average fan buy the fight? So here, I, to, there's no the, way I could know. I don't know either. And the UFC doesn't know. And we're just all hearsay. But Jose Aldo. Was he undefeated for nine years? One of the greatest fighters ever lived. Pam Frown, one of the greatest. You know, the the 145-pound champ of the world. Just a fucking absolute killer. Couldn't, could not a draw in any facet. Got no pay-per-view points, nothing. The only time anyone wanted to see him fight was when he fought Conor McGregor. The Conor rub-off mm-hmm. on uh, Jose Aldo helped him. After that, still he got a little bit of a boost, but after that, still nothing. No and he got murked in though. 19 seconds. <laughs> the rub off on Conor McGregor, uh, Conor McGregor is real. Now Nate beat him, but then lost. 
but you you need you need the right dance partner in this day and age to get people to give you their seventy dollars. It is what it is. Is Tony Ferguson a great dance partner? Fuck yeah, he's a tough dance partner. He can dance his ass off. Mm-hmm. Legit, he can like uh, b boy dance. But um, you get the point there. The the, the it, and it sucks, but this is the world we're in. Tony Ferguson, Nate's not a draw. Tony Ferguson, Khabib, oh my god, what a fucking fight! Not a draw. What do you want me to do, man? Mighty Mouse, not a draw. Chocolatito, pound for pound, best one, not a draw. Lomachenko might be the best boxer of all time, not a draw. It's the world we're in. CM Punk, draw. <laughs> it's true, though. Paige Van Zant, you know, I, God bless her. She's tough as nails, hot as shit, dance to the stars. On, you know, it's just the world we live in. It's tough for me to even put these together. Bigger draw than Tony, Khabib, Lomachenko, Chocolatito. Chocolatito, sorry. Mm. Fucking weird. Not my decision, guys. Yeah, I don't know. Crazy, right? I would love to see how it would do, but there's no way in hell I would know. The uh, Nate versus Ferguson. Just, but I'm sure Nate wouldn't want that, right? Especially after he No, said Nate doesn't want to find out either. So never mind. Nate, no, the one that. thing we know, the one thing we know is Nate versus Connor 3 it's gonna be huge. is going to be fucking enormous. Yeah. Everyone knows that. My mom knows that. She doesn't watch UFC anymore since I stopped. My mom fucking knows. That. I was talking to her the other day. What's going to happen with that Conor McGregor and that the darling, the Joey Dar- Diaz? Well, mom, God damn it. No, <laughs> Nate Diaz. Yeah, what's going to happen with that? I'm like, we don't know. But if it happens, I'll keep you posted. I would buy that one. No shit. Everyone will. Everyone will. So, what else you got? Are we good on time with... Let me see the phone. <laughs> what else you got, my man? Whoa. I got electrocuted. <laughs> A little bit. All right, the next one is Ally Akinta. That time that he told Ariel Hawani that... He thought that there was some sort of a ban on him not getting bonuses anymore. Like, he, it was unofficial at the time. Apparently, it's actually official. So, the, a UFC official talked to MMA Junkie, and they said that they actually get, gave him a three-fight bonus ban. Hold so up. For three so he, fights. he knew the ban this whole time? He said it was kind of like he thought they were doing it, but it wasn't really official. But someone told him that there's a ban? Yeah. Like, and why was there a ban? Because he talked shit before? Apparently there were three strikes. One time he ruined a hotel room. I remember that. Yeah. yeah and then it. he cussed on camera, on TV. I remember that. I remember that Boo too. me. Fuck yeah. you. That'd do it. And then the last one was he missed a, a fighter summit. Oh my, those are so lame. He said but he got those permission. Are the games. Though. Yeah, those are the games. Um, but it's official. He actually has a three, three fight God. bonus ban. What's so stupid. I oh this is tricky because he knows the rules. Granted, he did break the rules, but you give a guy a ban who's one of the most exciting fighters on the planet who put who's performed for you. Merck's Diego Sanchez. It's tough. Like I get saying, all right, you're banned, but you for sure give him discretionary bonus so he doesn't freak out like this. But also, I think we should award this kind of personality. I think you should run with this. Like, has his name ever been bigger nope. since he's done this? Like, this only encourages more of this behavior because guys aren't making money anyways. They're really not, unless you're one of the top, you know, three guys in the world. And even then, ask Damian Maya how that's going. So, you know, I think this encourages more guys to speak out, and you see more guys speak out, aren't you? Because now Al is bigger than ever, and he has the skills to back it up. Al, you need to get your ass on Big Round Breakdown. I'll pay for your flight. How about that? I know your ass is all the way in New Jersey doing some Soprano shit or probably – Mustering up something, but uh, before your next fight, I'll pay for your flight out here if you want to come on the show. Hit me up. Um, But yeah, I'm a big fan. Like I said, he's fighting the good fight, but you can't go away, which it doesn't sound like he's doing. (laughs) Definitely not going away. He's not going away. The the next thing I'm going to show you is what he posted on Twitter. He actually put down on Twitter, UFC cut me, you sissies. (laughs) Is that going too far or is that... (laughs) 
It's not, again, these guys, you know, if this is three years ago, four years ago, he said, cut me, you sissies, Mm -hmm. you're going to have some serious repercussions. Like, serious shit. Dana probably no press conference making fun of you. Something you probably would have got cut. Um, but now they're just like, what? You know, like, I don't know if they see it. You know, I'm, I'm sure Dana does it. He doesn't want to bring attention to it. I guarantee he does it, matter of fact. But I just don't think he wants to encourage it or, you know, because the for Al to say this stuff, he's, he's tempting him. Because you're going to let a guy like Al go. You know, he he looks good, speaks well. He's one of the top 10 55s in the world. Mm-hmm. He's on a win streak. He just destroyed a legend, Diego Sanchez. Like, he's upset, man. He's furious. You know, he's raging, Cajun. You know, the raging Al. Yeah, you know. So it's like his name's never been bigger. And, uh, you know, obviously Bellator would sign him in a heartbeat. And um, I just think he's testing the waters, and 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 everyone's picking it up, picking it up, and you know it's it's making headlines, and it's good for him because it's hard to stick out these days. So I, I think he's he's doing a good job. Um, how this ends for him, I'm not sure. I don't know. You know, he he has two more to go. Um, you know, I I can't imagine him doing him any, any favors. So we'll see what happens. But in general, it doesn't work out for him. But when I say in general, I'm talking about the old days. I don't know what they're going to do with him. Yeah. I don't know. Because he's a big star and he's at 55. That You need some blood at 55. You can't just keep letting everyone go because they disagree with you. You think Apple fires people because they disagree with the fucking new iPhone 8? No, they're good at their job, so they keep them there. But they're also not telling whoever's the president of Apple. I forget. He, you know, he's at... Um, gay dude who's killing it you know i'm just saying he's gay so i'm not gay bashing but you know what i'm saying <laughs> but saying. um it's not like he's telling that guy the president of that's the issue is because when he goes Dan White, shut the fuck up mm. now you know what i'm saying it's entertaining to us but that that is your boss so i don't know how that's gonna play out for him i'm i'm sitting back watching with my popcorn though and I'll, t- and I'll tune into his next fight. Guarantee that. So will a lot more people. Now that he's doing all this. True. Tony Ferguson, take notes. Khabib, take notes. Shit, Al. They might award Al fight with Tony Ferguson for intern belt or some shit. You know? Yeah. Because the owners of the UFC, you know, granted Dan's still one of them, but they might be like, dude, I like this fucking guy. This is cool and he has a big name. They just don't know the game. You might get Khabib next. What if, like, oh, really? Cut me, sissy? Here's Khabib. No one wants to fight fucking Khabib. Who knows what they're going to do with it. That's usually how they try and discipline you. Lorenz Larkin on his last fight, you know, they gave him Neil Magny, which is a tough matchup for him. It's not really a barn burner. You know, like Neil's not a huge draw, but he's ranked six or seven in the world. So, you know, Roger Huerta talked all that shit. He was on the front cover of Sports Illustrated. They gave him the worst matchup possible in Gray Maynard at the time. Like, they discipline you, man. That's their way of doing it. You get no bonuses. You get no. They're not going to promote your fight. You're going to be put on fight pass. You're going to be on early on the prelims. You know they 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 can they can make it very very difficult for you. Very similar to a warden in prison. Like it's going to be a tough job anyways. But now you want to talk shit to the warden? All right, cool man. Your meals going to be restricted. You're going to be solitary confinement. You know they're going to put you with the the worst matchup possible as far as. Maybe if you're a white dude, they put you with all the Mexicans. Like he can make it really tough on you, man. You can either do your time easy or make it tough. He's making it tough on himself, but he's also making a name for himself. So I support it. Al get your ass to the studio. What else you got? Real quick on that that whole three bonus three fight bonus ban. So is there anything not that I know legally, but as a fighter, when you sign a contract, can they do that stuff to you that you have to sign and go, yeah, they can do it? I don't they know want. how the new contracts are in mine. There was nothing that says you're not up for a bonus. That's I feel like that's some new shit. Maybe it's in the new contracts. I don't even know if it's in the contract. That also the the bonuses are fucking silly. The bonuses are from the back in the day. Like it's a silly concept yeah. when you think of the bonuses. Think how fucking weird the bonuses are this day and age. It's all it's all there's no science to it. It's, well, I like this guy and I thought his punch was cooler than this guy's punch. What? The fuck are you talking about? We need. There needs to be something here. You, you either get rid of them and just give guy, everyone discretionary bonus, which they're never going to do, but you just get rid of them, or you, it shouldn't be up to the promoters 
discretion who gets the bonus. That's fucking crazy. You want to be taken serious? Get rid of that. Mm-hmm. There should be, you know what they should do? They should have the media members like, um, you know, uh, fucking I'm drawing a blank right now, uh, Luke Thomas, fucking um, uh, uh, Hawani, all uh, Ben, uh, Bo- all these guys. Brett Akimoto. Brett Akimoto. You have just, you know, the, the guys who know their shit in the game. You have, you know, the same way, you know, the Hall of Fame gets voted in, the same way, um, you know, the all pro teams get voted in. You need to have those group of guys should vote on who gets the bonuses. Who don't have a the 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 some random guy's interest in hand or doesn't have beef with Al, so he's never gonna get a bonus because he told you to fuck off. Or you're not giving it to this guy because he's fucking a girl you like. What? We're not giving it to this guy because oh he he said this and uh, he said this about your Patriots, so he didn't get it. What the fuck are we talking about? You want me taken serious? Come on, you need to have a legit kind of panel. We have Luke Thomas, Hawani, yeah. Brett. You know all the you guys know who I'm talking about. All those like the real journalists in the game decide. Yeah. And it, you know, and it, it falls on their shoulders, and I'm, I'm sure they would gladly do that. To be honest, if not, you guys let me know. I'm just talking about my ass, but I'm, they watch every single fight from begin to end. They know the history of the sport. That's who you want to sign. Who gets a bonus? Not someone with a weird interest and grudge against a fighter. Like Al shouldn't not be able to, for a bonus because he has beef with Dana White. That's crazy. Yeah, it didn't make sense to me that they would do a ban. It just doesn't. So old doesn't school, no, yeah. and, it, and it hurts your brand too because he put it on performance of the night uh, fights. What else you got, brother? All right, next one, Stepe Miocic. Uh, a while back, he was talking about how, how angry he was that he wasn't getting as much as Alistair Overeem was, even though he was the champion and Alistair wasn't. Mm. I think Alistair got paid like eight hundred thousand. Stepe got six hundred. It's Alistair Overeem. Yeah, and then here. On a teleconferencing call that just happened recently for the two eleven fight, he was saying that he's he's happy about his pay now. I hate when guys do this. Steve Bay, you know I fucking love you, brother. And I, I pick you to win. Um Well let me let me rephrase. He goes, uh I'm fighting on May thirteenth, aren't I? So we're good. That's all I got to say. So he's necessarily saying he's happy, but he's saying he's good. Well, the and I I'm I'm but I don't think you know who who knows maybe he's getting you know he gets percentage of the pay per views and UFC to a, a champ he should he should so if he gets a percentage of the pay per views this pay per view is so big that he's going to make serious pay. he'll make seven figures mm. my issue is if he's not getting that and there's sometimes you have like Ben Henderson uh, heavyweight might be different because you're the heavyweight champion Ben Henderson didn't get pay per view points till. He defend the bet like three times, I think. It was some weird hit. You had to do it a certain amount of times. Jose Aldo, you only get it when you get a certain pay per view uh, point. Like you get this many dollars if you break five hundred thousand. Well, he was never breaking that, so he never got them. Mm. Isn't that weird? Yeah. So uh, hopefully, and I'm sure it isn't steep. A's we're good. So he said, "Well, I'm fighting on May 13th, aren't I? So we're good. That's all I gotta say. So I hope hopefully he's getting paid what he's worth. That being said, you're the heavyweight champion." Of the world, if you're not making at least five million a fight, you should not be happy, and you should not succumb to whatever they're paying you right now. That's crazy. That's crazy. You're the baddest man on the planet. I hope he's getting his due, though. I really do. And look at the legends he's beat. But if he's happy, I'm happy. Well, he's content at the very least. Content oh, doesn't says, pay your bills yeah. when, you know, 10 years down the road when we got hip problems. Ask Mark Coleman. But, yeah. you know, it's Steve He's a smart dude. I'm, I'm sure he's played his cards right. Is that it, brother? That's pretty much it. Let's do it, man. We got to break this bitch down. <laughs> Let's break it down then. Here we go. Here's the card. Now we had a breakdown. We about yeah. to have ourselves a long, long We're going to do a million current events, but probably have to take a break. All right. The breakdown of UFC 211. Finally, it's here. I've been breaking down some of my live shows. Didn't get too into, uh, you know, the exact kind of details, but we can get into it here. Um, I, You know, we don't want this to be a five-hour-long show, so anything else, I'm sure 
we can talk about it later. But uh, we'll start with Eddie Alvarez, Dustin Poirier. Um, I mean, this you know this could be a main event on any you know fight night or anything like that. Um, you look at Eddie Alvarez's record. You know he's the underground king, right? That's his name. Yeah. I just stylistically. And, you know, matchup wise for Dustin Poirier, and you, you look, you know, Dustin Poirier, and this could be the one that gets him over the hump. And I think that's what's going on here. They're trying to see where he's at. But Dustin Poirier is a guy, whenever he fights like the elite of the elite, he, he, he struggles. He just does. Um, you know, and there's argument like, well, he beat Max Holloway. He beat Max Holloway in 2012. That's a different Max Holloway. Um, but. You know, outside the top five, he's a fucking nightmare to deal with. He just is. Dustin Poirier does everything well. He's been fighting for a long time. He's finally a veteran. You know, at this weight class, he's a monster. I'm just, I'm just, I, I, I'm not sold on him yet. And, and you know, the argument's gonna be like, well, is Eddie Alvarez over the hill? Like, look at Eddie. Look who Eddie's beat. Being the Bellator champion, being the UFC champion. What a he's a Hall of Famer. Hate to tell you guys this, and I don't know why a lot of people are talking about. It. He's a straight up Hall of Famer. Bellator champ, UFC champ. If you don't know Eddie Alvarez, go back and watch his fights when he fought Michael Chandler in Bellator. They're ridiculous. And you just go you go through and you see all the guys who he's beat, man. Let's just go over some of the names here. He beat Aoki, which you diehard MMA fans know. He beat Chandler. He beat Patrick Pitbull by KO head kick. So Aoki, Chandler, uh, Gilbert Melendez, Anthony Pettis. Dos Anjos, and then scroll down even before that. He's been doing work forever, man. He's just a guy. If if you remember when he's fighting in Dream, fight. Remember Yo- Yokim Hansen. Yeah. Remember that Kawajiri beat both of them. He's just he's been doing it forever, man. He just has, you know. And those true MMA fans, you know, they love this guy. But he's a, he's a Hall of Fame. He's a legit Hall of Famer. He's if you know if he's getting that gold coat, man. He just is. I, I don't know why a lot of people don't talk about it, but um, I just don't see unless, you know, Eddie Alvarez, the, the, finally all the years and the wear and tear has caught up to him. I don't see him losing this fight. I really don't. I, you know, he's been there with best of the best. Dustin Poirier hasn't been tested of a guy at this level and, and passed the test. I think Eddie Alvarez matches up with him very well. You know, it's not a five round fight for three rounds. Eddie Alvarez is a nightmare. Now people are gonna go, well, Eddie Alvarez when he fought Conor McGregor got it's you know it's Conor McGregor. Look what Conor McGregor did us in Poirier. So I MMA math doesn't work here, does it? Um, you know, I'll take Eddie Alvarez um by decision. Who do you got, Jen? I didn't even think about that one. But I would I would probably go with Dustin Poirier. Hmm. Yeah. What's the odds? You have the odds? Yeah. So Dustin Poirier is minus one thirty, but then Eddie Alvarez is plus one ten. So not Christ. really. That's basically a pick. Yeah. All right, all right. Next fight. Main card: um, Cejudo versus Pettis. Who? Um, you know Henry Cejudo's. He, he's he's the best guy. At this division of 125 pounds, not named Joey Benavidez or not named Mighty Mouse. And he's lost to both of them back to back. You know, obviously, Demetrius Johnson just m- dismantled him like a motherfucker. Um, and then Joey Benavidez, he lost by split decision. So he's right there. Um, and he was deducted a point, if you remember, I think in the first, second round. Hmm. They kept hitting him low blow, I think. Is that right? Um, but I, God, it's a, again, you, you, we see guy, you know, Dustin Poirier, I look at him as far as, you know, facing this upper echelon guys, you look at, uh, Sergio Pettis, who, you know, he, he hasn't beat a ton of, uh, top caliber guys, you know, Mor- Moraga is a top talent to get, you know, he was a guy who fought for the title. He beat him in a decision. I, I, I have a hard time picking Pettis in this fight. You know, Cejudo, he's just, you know, you're talking about an Olympian. You're talking about a guy who split decision, Joey Benavidez. I think Joey Benavidez would eat fucking Sergio Pettis up. Um, I don't know the odds, but for, show me after I pick. Sure. I'll, I'll, I'll take Cejudo, and I think he gets done TKO. Let's check. The odds would say decision. Wow. What is it? Minus 440 for Cejudo. That's a huge favorite. Huge favorite, and it makes martial arts. 
All right. Who cool. you got? You going um, different? I probably I was probably going to take Cejudo anyways. It's, too. It, I mean, it's a, it's the safe bet for sure. But you look at the 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 body of work, it, especially if you're going to bet on it. Cejudo is probably the bet there. Cool. Next one, Yair versus Frank Yeager. What a great fucking Yair El Pantera Rodriguez. Was it the greatest nickname of all time? El Looks Pantera's like a dime cool. piece, and he's a big ass dude too for that division. Uh, give me your take on this one. My take? Yep. I do like Yair, but I think he's just more flashier. Mm-hmm. I think for what I always I always believed in Frank Yeager's Frank skills, his technical skills. Okay, and not. I just believe that Frank Yeager will fight through all the, and I'm not going to call it bullshit, but fight through all the flashiness and then get it done. Maybe TKO. That's fair. I think, you know, I spoke about the Sun Fighting Kid. I just don't, I'm not on this Yair Rodriguez train yet. I'm not. Bring up his record for me. You know, he split decision win over Bruce Leroy. You know what Frankie Edgar would do to Bruce Leroy? Are you kidding me? He would eat his ass up. And then, you know, we're, we're all high and mighty on him because he beat a, you know, a BJ Penn who didn't know where he was at. You know, a walking legend. You know, and I, and I can't believe BJ is still fighting. I fucking love BJ. I always watch him fight, but that was a tough fight to watch. He had eaten alive like the sheep off fucking Jurassic Park. He was just there. Uh, I think anyone would beat BJ that night. You know, so in, in most of his wins are decision. He has that, the highlight that we'll see a million times over Andre uh, Feely, which was a flying head kick, which is great. And he predicted he's going to knock Frankie out flying uh, uh, knee or kick or whatever the fuck it is. I don't see the hype, man. I, I, it's fun, and his highlights are cool to watch, and he's unorthodox, stuff like that. I just think, you know, and there's always the change of a guard, and I was wrong when I picked fucking uh, Cruz over Garbrandt. I just, I thought eventually Garbrandt would be champ. I didn't know this soon, and goddamn was I wrong. Fucking Garbrandt looks great, and I'll eat my words on that. This is a different animal here, though. You know, Garbrandt's beat, he beat some out with Almeida. He's beat some tough dudes. And but the thing is, he didn't beat him. He fucking dismantled, murked, him, walked through him like a goddamn savage. With Yair, I just, there's no murking or there's no savagery. That he's fought very mediocre guys. I just think, and he asked for this fight, and God bless him, man. Will he be champ? I would bet money on that. This year, no. Next year, maybe. This too much too soon. It's a win-win for him, though. It's very similar to Canelo Mayweather fight. Canelo was 22 when he fought Mayweather. He fought one of the best of all time. You lose that, it's fucking, you know, it's Mayweather. You're good, man. Keep going. You're young. You'll learn from that. Move on. You lose to Frankie Edgar. Don't hang your head. It's all, You're only fighting big names from here on out. It's a win-win for him, especially his magnitude. I think um, early rounds, you, even, if, even if Frankie gets caught, unless you flatline Frankie Edgar, ask Gray Manion. Unless you f- flatline him, he's going to be there all fight. Yeah. He's going to be winning on points, taking down. You want those kicks, you're going to get taken down. He's going to wear you out. His card is going to be way, way better. And also, Frankie's a black belt in jiu-jitsu under Henzo Gracie. And he has Mark Henry, who is the best footwork in the game. So he's, his team's too good. And just look at who Frankie's beat. Time out of, again, Mount Rushmore Hall of Famer. I got Frank Yeager. Um, I'll, I'll say, you know, I'll, I'll say decision, but I, I, I really, that first round's going to be interesting. Then after that, I think uh, Frankie takes over and does work on this young buck. Sounds good to me, too. <sighs> Next fight. Damien Maya, Jorge Masvidal. Have you, have you gone back <laughs> and thought of a different winner? It's such a tough fight. You know, Masvidal made me eat my words when he dismantled Cowboy. But it's Cal, you know, I'm not taking anything away from Masvidal. It was Cowboy who shouldn't have been fighting that night. It was in his hometown, though. You know, you have to believe there's just a certain guy's time. You know, was Damian Maia's time when he was at the middleweight division and got that title shot? Is his time now? Or is he making the biggest career blunder that you can make in taking this fight when he could have waited and fought Woodley in July for a title shot? You know, Masvidal knows he wins, he gets a title shot. Who, who'd you pick? I'd pick Damian Maya. Oh, God damn it. That one time he was close to his time a while back 
when he was on sort of a run at middleweight. He was trying to do more striking. Right? Yeah, like now boxing. it's just grappling. Well, now he's sticking to his bread and butter. And God, he looks good. Yeah. I'm torn, man. 50-50? 50-50. Can't call it. Oh, what about your heart? It's and my job to call it. Your heart my heart's your with both of them. My head's with both of them. Oh, damn. I'm, I'm, I might flip a coin. You know what? That's not fair. It's my job to pick a fight. Mm. Um. Oh. I'll then take Damian Maya. Damian Maya? Damian Maya via choke. You want to see the odds? Sure. Oh, Maya's an minus. Underdog. Oh no, it's Maya and S. Mazdal minus 130. Uh, Damian Maya plus 110. It's even tough for them to call it. Yeah. I'm biting my I'm nervous for that fight. I'm biting my nails as I'm talking to you guys. <laughs> that fight stresses me out. Whew. Uh let's move on. So we both got Damian Maya. I switched cool. my, I, I think I picked at the live show, Mazvidal. The size with Damian Maya, the timing. But then I can see my, uh, Jorge avoiding the takedown and murking his ass with a head kick. And you could always live tweet or Instagram right before the fight if you change your mind again, right? You're right. It's possible. But you got to stick with it. I'll go Damian Maya, and then he fights Woodley. That'd be great. That's a fun fight. Next fight, Ioana Janjacek and Jessica Andraj. Yeah, Ioana, uh, funny. You look at everyone on this card, you look at me, uh, Stipe, JDS, uh, Masvidal, Frankie Edgar, Rodriguez, um, Eddie Alvarez, Dustin Poirier, all great strikers, right? Jesus Christ, talking about the who's who in the UFC. And the best striker, man or woman, is Ioana. <laughs> you know how MTV gave her that award for just best acting in a movie, man or woman? Gender neutral. Gender neutral. Ioana is your best striker in the UFC. Nice. Doesn't matter, man or woman, she's your best. Um, I think this fight for uh, Joanna, it, it, it's not going to be easy. Don't get me wrong; it's not going to be easy. Stylistically, it is an easy matchup for because Jessica. Granted, she's bigger and she's strong, mm-hmm. and we've seen Joanna get taken down, but she pops back up. You know, she went to a decision with Angela Hill, and you, you know you can't really do MMA math here, but. You know, her thing is to get girls down and ground and pound. Get them down, ground and pound. And she's thick, she's big, she's short, but her striking is very barbaric. It's very brawler power style, which for a technician like Joanna, and when I say that, there's video evidence of this. Go and look at Andrade's striking when she throws right hand and her feet are off the ground or her her hips are neutral she's standing you know like you're straddling a horse your feet are even you, does that make sense so she's not always in the best position to knock someone out joanna can you know she could probably beat her with a blindfold on i hate to shit on your co-main event you'll see two of them but she could probably dismantle through a blindfold on but this fight's interesting and fun because She's so powerful. If she does catch Joanna, she's going to be in trouble. But Joanna's so good, and she's faced way better competition. I don't see it happening. You know, when's the last time we've seen her get catched really, really good? Um, it, it doesn't exist. So I just feel like Andrade is going to be there, and she's going to eat these shots and keep coming, but it's going to be a blood fest. She, she's, about, she's about to get open face surgery. Joanna, uh, you know, and she has a bunch of decisions. I think that surprised a lot of people, but uh, Joanna via a decision. But it, it's it's a beatdown. Bloody beatdown. Bloody, bloody, bloody beatdown. Cool. Main event, son. All right, main event. Steve Amiocic, Junior Dos Santos. Don't show me the odds yet. Nope. Um, you know, this fight breaks down to, you know, Stipe, you know, he's had his time off. He he had those fights with Cain Velasquez. You know, those took a toll on him, man. You know, I, you know, you, know, you never want to say it. And, you know, a lot of people don't think it, but his corner really should have th- threw in the flag, you know, the towel in a lot of those fights, and it would extend his career. Um, so, you know, he loses to Cain in that five-round fucking beat down where he loses his belt. Competes with Mark Hunt, spinning heel cook, which is crazy for a heavyweight. And, you know, and he, um, that was to fight for Kane again. Then he fights Kane, and remember, Kane picks him up and slams him. But again, it was five rounds of getting his ass whooped. He was never in that fight. Kane beat the fuck out of him for 10 rounds. You know, you know what it's like? Most people don't get beat up for 10 rounds ever in their career. 
But that short, you're talking about, you know, in a year, he fought Kane December 2012, fought him again October 2013. In a year, he had 10 rounds of an ass whooping. That'll fuck up your career. Then he fights Stipe after that. Kane picked up, slammed him, right? Then he fights Stipe. And that was on Fox in 2014. He beat Stipe in decision. I had Stipe win that fight. I thought Stipe won that first one. And then after Stipe, which I thought he loses. So remember, so in my book, he loses to Kane, gets his ass whooped. Fight Stipe, again, another decision. So you're not 15 rounds between Stipe and Kane total fucking wars. When I say wars, he was getting the, the blunt force of most of those wars. He fights Stipe. I thought he loses that one. Then he fights Alistair Overeem. Gets knocked out, which we haven't seen before. We've never seen him get knocked out. Gets knocked out by Alistair Overeem in the second round. Then he fight. Then he takes a lot of time off. December doesn't fight again till April 2016. And you know against Ben Rothwell, he looked good. It, and it's in Croatia. It was Ben perfect matchup for him? Slow, big guy. We didn't see really you know this grinding pace, which Alist- which uh, JDS usually struggles with. And then you look at Stipe, and since their fight where technically he lost, Stipe's only gotten better. His comps has only gotten better. He's beat everybody. Mark Hunt, he beat the brakes off the legendary Mark Hunt. Remember when he beat Andre Arlovsky? You're talking about, you know, it's prime Andre Arlovsky. Knocks him, so he knocks out Mark Hunt. Knocks out Andre Arlovsky. Knocks out Fabrice Overdoom in Brazil to get the heavyweight championship. Knocks out... Alistair Overeem in the first round and eats a fucking gnarly. Was it kick to the face? I don't remember now. Either way, he gets knocked to his ass, pops up like a true champion. So I just feel like since their last fight, and Stipe's only blunder, his real blunder on his uh, resume is against Struve, where you know Struve knocked him out. And, you know, I'll give him you know a pass on that one. But um, yeah, I, I just feel like Stipe's gotten better. He has. He is uh, the confidence on his side. I just think it's his time. I, I, I don't think JDS wins this fight. And I also don't think this is a decision either. I think I think Stipe ends up winning this fight uh, via TKO, uh, second or third round. Good. What do you got? <laughs> this is one another one where I just don't know who's going to win. But for some reason, I think it's going to go to decision. And I think it's going to be bad for Junior Dos Santos. Like, I feel Junior like he's going to get beat up really bad. Really? Yeah. But that's a good call. But I do think Junior can knock out Stipe. Yeah, if he lands that left yeah. hook, if Stipe, yeah, it, that's the thing at heavyweight. Like, you know, he could go in there and Stipe uh, Junior could have an off night. But if he lands that classic left hook, it's over, man. That's heavyweights for you. Listen, if uh, the rest of these divisions, if Frankie Edgar has an off night and Yair lands his left hook, it's not over. If Cejudo and Little Pettis. You know, little Pettis has an off night, and Cejudo lands a bomb of a right hand. It's not over. That's why heavyweight's so exciting, man. So there you have it. So I'm taking Cejudo, Frankie Edgar, Damian Maya, maybe, Joanna by murder, and Stipe Miocic via TKO. It does not go all five rounds. That is UFC 211, which I cannot wait for. Chin and I only disagree on one, I think, and that's Damian Maya Masvidal. Oh, no. Oh, no. You got Damian Maya. What do we disagree on? No, wait. One. So, yeah. Only oh, no. You got Poirier. Poirier. Yeah. Okay. That's the only one that we disagree good on. Good call. Yeah. Yeah, because I was picking uh, Masvidal, and then I just went Maya. But who knows? I could probably go Masvidal before the fight. I like to switch hit. Um, <laughs> boom. UFC 211 this Saturday. That's in Dallas, right? Dallas. Pretty sure. Yep. That's a fun one, man. We jump in this Lorenz Larkin interview. Let's do it. All right, guys. Next up is uh, a gentleman by the name of Lorenz Larkin. You can follow him on Instagram, Twitter, at uh, underscore Monsoon. He is one of the best welterweights on the planet. He is fighting for the 170-pound world title at Madison Square Garden on June 24th on Bellator Pay-Per-View against Douglas Lima. Ladies and gentlemen, if you don't know who he is, you better check it check yourself Lorenz Larkin. Special guest in the studio. Dude, I feel bad. We left you hanging down there in the lobby. Oh, I, I blame Bellator. I'm going to take a warm hand yeah. to <laughs> Eric's face. Ladies and gentlemen, one of the best fighters on the planet, 
in the welterweight division, Lorenz Larkin. Dang. What's up, man? That's a title right there. It's true, though. <laughs> You're fighting for a world title, son. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Fighting for a world time. title. I, uh, I've wanted to get you in here for a while and just... For whatever reason, uh, scheduling and conflicts uh-huh. it didn't happen. But you being in Riverside, it's pretty easy shot here, man. Yeah, man. You got, dude. Your fans are loyal, man. They're like, they're yeah, they love you. Anytime that you ever talk, man, they're like, hey, yes. you need to, they, he needs to get you on the show. Yeah, you man. need to be on the show. You need to be on the show. I was like, all right, man. You know, <laughs> let's down, figure it I'm out. They're like, yeah, they're like, <laughs> yeah. relentless. They're on it, man. Hell, hell yeah. They just like to support. And I think a guy like you who puts his neck on the line and I was just going before he came here. I was I was doing some research last night. I'm looking at your career, and I'm like, God, what a fucking career, man! Because in Strike Force, you're kind of thrown to the wolves right away. Uh, yeah, like it, it, you forget the guys you've beat and the guys you've lost to. But it's like, it's not like you're an overnight success. Like it's not like this world title fight with Douglas Lima. It's like, oh, you're yeah, here, man. Like you know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's yeah, like yeah. you have earned this. And like I was a guy. Who you've you've flown a little under the radar in the UFC for mm-hmm. whatever reason, and you, but when you look at the wins, you're like why though? Like I don't get it. Mm-hmm. And then you look in Strike Force, you know you you lose to a guy like King Mo, but he tests positive. Mm-hmm. But that that time at King Mo, I was like, God, that I feel like that's a huge step up for him. Yeah, you lose that, and then you get then they're like, Oh, sorry about the King Mo thing, he tests <laughs> yeah, positive. Yeah. Here's Robbie Lawler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you beat Robbie Lawler. Uh-huh. And they're like, damn, here's my shot. Yeah, yeah you're probably going to fight Luke Rockhold for yeah, the title because yeah. he just beat Kennedy. So you're going to fight uh, Rockhold. We sold, man. My mm. bad. And then you move over to mm. – or because that fight was supposed to happen, right? And they kept falling out or something. Yeah, Luke got it was hurt. Just, it was just a weird timing because it was kind of like nobody really wanted to fight either because it was in that limbo yeah. of – um. Because not everybody was guaranteed that they were going over the UFC. So it was just, it was like one of those like last fight on your contract type of things. Like, uh, you know, should I, should I fight or should I just chill and then fight, you know, in UFC? So yeah. it, was, it was a weird time, that, that little period. It was weird. And then the UFC, Zufa, I should say, by Strike Force. Mm-hmm. And then there's a list of fighters that come over. Mm-hmm. Did you, was there any doubt that you're going to get imported into the UFC? Um, I mean, I, I had some doubt, you know, but I was thinking, you know, like I should be fighting for a title. I, I'm pretty sure I, I should have some type of spot. And then not too long, you know, after everything was kind of happening, I got the word like, you know, you're, you're good. good. Yeah. But you're not. But that title shot's not happening. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah it's it's not happening. Like, oh, yeah, that yeah. title against Luke Rackle. Nah, yeah. here's the UFC. But and you get a gonna, fight. Yeah. Yeah. You get a fight. But it's <laughs> like you weren't like treated with open arms in the red carpet yeah like yeah, yeah, let's yeah. say you did fight luke rockle and strike force and beat him and you the champ mm-hmm. it's a different story yeah so i feel like you get there you're, you're about to get in the club and you're like mm-hmm. finally dog and like you know what we're gonna need to wait we're actually moving yeah. locations like all right cool then you get to the ufc the pants like, are too loose back like, in line you know, can't wear hats are, man yeah. go champ <laughs> yeah, god yeah, yeah. damn now you're in the back of the line yeah. and then you get to the ufc i'm looking at your UFC, ufc career and it's not like you were like at first you struggled a little bit for mm-hmm. whatever reason, for for uh, you know I I don't I'm, I don't know if it's personal or something like that, but you've beat better guys. Yeah, you know what it was, man. It was, and I, I tell everybody, it's I was like I thought I was fighting at the right weight class, you know what I mean. But when I was fighting at eighty five, I was like, I was, you know, I was I was getting the weight, but and I and I, when I weigh in with these guys, I'm just like, ah. Oh, this is cool because, you know, everybody tells me at my, my whole camp, you know, and just friends and, and just people I know, they're like, dude, you should go down lower. These guys are big. I'm like, every time I weigh in, I'm like, these guys ain't that big. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, like the next day when we're all getting on the bus, you know, and you'll see your opponent get on his bus. I'm like, I don't know, man. That guy <laughs> looks pretty fucking big, you know. Yeah. And I'm just like, how's that? You know, like, nah, we we look the same on weigh-ins. Mm-hmm. But dude, they they're just packing on more. You know, I'm packing on seven. I mean, yeah, seven, that's, that's eight. Not shit. Think about the guys you're fighting. Exactly. You know what I mean? The what? This guy Nick Rossbro. I fought him at two o five, and we were the uh, we were on the just challengers. We were the main event at the Palms for Strike Force, and I remember he was already tall. But I seen him the next day. I was like, dude. Why is this guy so huge? 
And he said he weighed in at, and he, 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 I was like, after we fought, and I talked to him after, I was like, dude, what do you weigh right now? He was like, 230. I was like, like you're 230, what? dude? You know, I'm like, 212, 213. Think about it. Yeah. So, it's a lot of weight. Yeah. Man. So, the whole thing I kind of came up with is like, when I was at 85 and I was at 205, I had to fight a perfect game. I couldn't like, maybe slack off just a little bit, you know, and catch, like, I have to fight to win. I had to fight a perfect game. Yeah, your margin of error is so Yeah, small, I don't man. have that big of a margin for, like, mess up and then come back the next round no. and fix it. It was just, like, I have to be, per- I have to have a perfect game, so which what, is hard. So you know? what was the final kind of straw that broke the camel's back to get you to 70? I th- I've been hearing it for a long time, and then, and then, um... I think it was after my last, I, I lost to Brunson. And then I was just like, you know, just F it. You know, I was just like, it's either I'm going to try it and then we'll see. See what happens? Yeah, we'll just see what happens. And then and then um, UFC was all down for it, you know. So they gave me the fight against Howard. And then, then that's when I started the cut and that's where- to 70. And then I was like, yeah. So then at 70, I realized that I'm either the big guy or... The, like the norm. Yep. You know what I mean? I'm not, I don't really, the only time I see somebody bigger than me, it's not really bigger than me, but they're taller. Yeah, which is whatever. Yeah, yeah. But as far as size. Yeah, you're not finding a disadvantage. Yeah, anymore. yeah. It's and just you, like. You see guys, either you see guys who kill themselves to make the lighter weight, and they're like, you look good. And then when they finally find that happy medium, mm. they just kill it. Look at Damian Maya. Yeah, He's yeah. He's got yeah. 85. Granted, he was good at 85. 70? Well, but he's a nightmare yeah, yeah, for yeah, people. Yeah, yeah. He's won, what, six in a row? Mm-hmm. So we see it with a lot of guys. And then, so you had the, uh, I think it was knockout of the night, and you got, you got a bonus with the Howard, uh-huh. and you start rolling these wins, man. Yeah, rolling yeah. these wins in. So it was just, it was good, man. I just felt like the the big guy for once. If yeah. I wasn't the uh, normal, you know, so mm-hmm. I just felt good. I felt I feel strong at 70. I felt. Yeah, and then you go on this, kind of this rampage, and I'm trying to think, you, you had some fights where, it, again, this is just its a theme of your career, man. I think it's why people love you. But a lot of times, it's a decision that could have went either way. Mm-hmm. It either went your way, like the Jorge Masvidal fight, mm-hmm. or it didn't go your way. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's just its heartbreaking. I've been, I've only had that happen once in my career with Andre Orlovsky. And it is – I would rather get knocked out, I think. Yeah. When you put in the work yeah. and you actually – I mean, you're, you're kind of like, damn, I, I won that fight. Mm-hmm. And you get cheated, I'd almost rather be more clear and I get choked out or tapped out. Yeah, because like – Masvidal, that we went back and forth. I, I feel like I, I etched that one out, you know, and kind of clearly. But the Tumanov, that's when I was just like, oh, "Are you serious?" Because I got, uh, I lost to Tumanov. Yeah, but I was just like, you know, but I, physically, I'd done way more damage, you know. Like I didn't even get really get touched like that, you know. And I'm just like, but it's just different. It just depends on the judging, you know. I've, I think your style too. I think. You have this unconventional style where you know you, you know how it is with this state of the game where the refs and the in, really the the not the refs I should say the judges yeah it's hard to critique someone with a style like yours maybe mm-hmm. because it's unconventional the kicks you throw the angles I think it's almost hard for them to comprehend yeah it just I don't know I it just because I like everybody knows like it's damaging you're seeing damage to you legs you're seeing limping. But it's just like I don't know. It's just. But then you get you get that out of the way. You're like, all right, forget, just keep rolling. You got the Tumanov fight. You got the Jorge Masvidal fight, and look at Jorge now. Yeah, yeah. You know, kudos to you. And then you go on a little bit of it. Well, you still are on on this tier, mm-hmm. and you start to get more. I feel like you're starting to get more notoriety. And then the big one is when they gave you Neil Magny, who was on this fucking hot streak. Mm-hmm. Neil's my boy from Denver trained with Neil and uh-huh. I was like God it's a tough fight mm. and you know but you 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 weren't getting kind of the push from the UFC as far as like this straight killer so when they matched up with Neil even Neil was like you know I took the fight I didn't realize how fucking good he was and you mm-hmm. come and you throw that those spinning kicks and just mm-hmm. literally beat the shit out of Neil and he was just like I didn't you know I did we didn't do our homework like yeah. he was a guy we didn't realize how fucking good he was until it was too late yeah with the Neil fight man it I was pumped about that fight, and he's 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 tough as shit too, man. He's but, really really tough. But I just I was I, I, mean, <laughs> I felt I, like you didn't respect him. Huh? I I call him the gazelle because he has such good cardio. Uh-huh. I call him, you know Neil the gazelle. 
I feel like you were literally like, what are you going to do? Like, what the fuck? You, like, bully beat down. Yeah, well, it, it just, it was just everything in that fight, man. It was just, because I kind of felt like it was, um, I got put in that position where I wanted to renew. Not saying anything, I'm not in a bad situation now with Bellator, but I say that, you know, I would have never been in this situation with Bellator because I would have resigned. Mm-hmm. You know, not saying I don't like Bellator, but I'm just saying I would have never got put in that situation to even think about yeah to be a free promotion. agent yeah so you know when they're so i take it as like i don't know i just take shit personally Disres- you know you should yeah so when they're like no like you know, well that they gave me an offer which is bullshit it was a bullshit offer so but just backtrack so before the neil magny fight that was the last fight in your contract yeah and so you that were was like, my fourth fight i'm like yeah let's yeah. resign yeah okay and so like, that yeah. so i was already pumped like once they're like oh, yeah we have a fight so i was like cool Let's talk about, you know, the new contract. And when they gave me what they wanted to do as a new contract, I was like... Six fight deal, I assume? Four fight. Four fight, and the, but the money was some bullshit. It was bullshit. Like, completely, like, Horrible. ridiculous. And um, I was like, hell no. Like, what is that? Yeah. Like, are you serious? Especially what I've, I've been doing. So then, like, well, you can fight out the next fight, you know? And, and so, t- you, they, so they were basically like, either take this or you can... F- yeah. Beat this dude and test free agency. Well, the, well, the, we were talking about the contract first, and then they're like, "Well, you can fight out your next fight." And then they gave me Magni. So then I was like, "So now what I'm doing? I'm taking it like, okay, so now you guys are just trying to fuck me. Not saying I'm going to lose, but you're trying to give me a really tough guy, yeah, and be like, well, just fight out your contract, yeah. you know, and and give you a tough guy on your way out, and hopefully you lose." And then they resign you with some bullshit. Correct. Or they just let you leave it's on the business. market. You yeah. should take it personal, but no. it's business. So that's the thing is like, anytime in my career, I always look at shit from a fighter's aspect and from a business aspect. Like, as far as them. You know, I try to look at it from both sides. It's tough, that, though. It is. But you, I never want to be the guy asking for bullshit when I don't deserve it. Yeah. You know what I mean? So I always try to make sense of both sides and be like... No, this is reasonable. Like, I'm being reasonable right now. I'm not being like... 100% you're being reasonable. Yeah, yeah. so... I've seen those contracts. Yeah. So, It'll hurt your feelings, guys, <laughs> that you don't know. Oh, I've, oh, I've been there, brother. Yeah. Keep going. So, going into that fight, I was just like, these guys are trying to get you to lose, for sure, and re-sign you on some bullshit, and, and they're just trying to fuck you all the way around, you know? So, then I was like, okay. So, I was already training, and I was doing my homework on them, but going into that fight, I was just like... Oh, I'm going to stick you it. You took all the frustration oh. out on poor Neil. Oh, uh, 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 yeah, <laughs> Kick Neil's like, what the fuck? Yeah. Hey, huge! And it was and like then, over. I was like, God damn, Larkin. So then not just that, too. And then they tell me, because I go on this whole big spill, because I never really vent and shit like that in the media. But then they tell me, because that to me, that's a big fight. You know, it's a really good fight. It should be on pay-per-view. Yeah. So then they tell me, oh, you guys are going to be on Fight Pass. You guys going to be the future fight on Fight Pass. I was like... Ah, dog, who watches Fight Pass? Are you kidding me right now? Like, what are you guys trying to do to me? <laughs> so I was just like, I would have, you know what? I would have pulled the racist card. Oh, <laughs> just yeah, fucking bombs over Baghdad. Yeah. That's racist, dog. Just two two black, black guys, guys huh? got Fight Pass, put us to the back of the yeah. bus on Fight Pass. That's what I would have done. So then, forced their hand. Yeah, so then I was just really pissed because I was just like, they're just trying to keep me like super hold you under the radar. Yeah. But then, yeah, to give, to give, um, oh, man, I forgot his name, Eric. No, no, I forgot his name, but he's the president of Fight Pass. Oh, I don't know. They he re- he re- yeah, he reached me out. He reached out to me, and uh, he's just like, "Give us a shot. We'll show you that you know we'll, we'll market." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so sounds so, like they, sounds like you came to buy a Ferrari and they brought you a Civic. Like I know, yeah. I know, it looks like shit. Just see what it gets. Yeah, yeah, great yeah. gas mileage. Yeah. So then, but to give them credit they did market the shit out of the fight yeah. they did and, yeah, and it, it, they really that. did put a lot of like <laughs> power behind yeah, it power what behind they it. can for yeah, fight pass yeah though. they did so I, I can't argue with that but yeah so all that stuff going into that fight I was just like and so poor Neil yeah, you so release the, the hounds on Neil yeah. you release all the aggression you murk Neil Magny who at the times ranked what was he top 8 yeah he was uh, he was high he was, I remember he was 8 or 7 7 like that so he's seven. Yeah, uh-huh. You murk the number seven guy in the world. So then in your mind, you're like, here we go. Let chips on the table, oh. dog. Just murk your boy oh. on fight pass like you wanted. Yeah. What's up? And what was what was the answer from them? It was, uh, 
it was nothing for a long time. I was, I still remember I was doing the interviews, of, like the post fight interviews and stuff like that up there, and I was just like on cloud nine, like, oh yeah, it's gonna start rolling in. We going blah, blah. Sizzler. But yeah, after the fight, it was just like Brr. nothing, nothing, like, nah, nothing. I was like, I was like, it's coming. I was like, <laughs> Any day, you know. You know my, is your management dealing with this? Like uh, at the time, is your man? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you calm? Like I, oh. I would go, every day, I'm like, hey, have you, uh, have you heard anything? Yeah, like, so we'll just, let you know when they do. I'm yeah, like, yeah. all right, cool. So like, all my buddies are just like, you know, hell yeah, man, you're about to get be, be set. Da-da-da. I'm like, yep, yep, yep. Nothing, dude. So for the longest, and then I was just like, what the fuck? You Weeks know, like, go by. Oh, it months. Damn. That I didn't get a second offer from UFC because I when I went to Bellator, I had an offer on the table from UFC. They submitted another offer, and that was that was like when I signed. They submitted that offer maybe three weeks before I signed. Hmm. So, and that was like so between that period of time, I think it was like five months. Was your management months. like, "Yo, man, yeah, dude, they're like, Lorenz is about to sign a belt, or if you guys don't come up with some shit here, like just, you're gonna lose them." I don't know. I don't know if it like <laughs> I don't know. Because it was everything, I guess, I don't know if it was everything that was happening with the 205 card, because that's in the midst of all that, the 205 and all the, like, big cards, but I don't know. But they submitted another offer, and it and was still... My my thing is, with this stuff, is who is, is your management, or who are you guys dealing with? You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I was in the same situation where, it's the last five of my contract, they gave me Matt Mitrione in Toronto, main card... Like you're gonna have to beat him to to mm-hmm. to get a new contract. All my sponsors were on the line. I remember I beat him. I'm like, we're going Sizzler. I'm getting paid. Yeah, you yeah, know, yeah. Everything top fifteen heavyweight in the world. What's up, dog? Mm-hmm. And the offer was all right, but I heard yeah. within a week. But that, those were the Joe Silva, Reed Harris, Dana yeah. White days. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but see, I'm I'm talking. Well, I'm not talking with, but you know, my management's talking with Joe. You know, because Joe at the time, at the time was he's, he's taking care of the 70 and I think 70 and up. 70 and up. Yeah, correct? yeah, yeah. So, yeah. I don't, That's I don't, so strange, man. Yeah. Because, Even off the first contract, Joe. Because when, when you were, a, when we found out you were testing the free agency, Rogue and I were talking, uh, we're talking Beltor signed, I think, Roy McDonald. And we were talking, and uh, I go, man, I, I hope, you know, I love Bellator. I love UFC. I love MMA. Mm-hmm. I should say that out the front. I love MMA. I love UFC. I love Bellator. But I wanted to see you compete with the top three, top two guys mm-hmm. in welterweight in the UFC. Yeah. I said, man, I I hope they're smart enough where they don't let Larkin go. Mm-hmm. And Joe goes, I know, man. He's so dynamic. He's such a beast. I want to commentate his fights. I remember Joe saying that. Yeah, yeah. And we're like, we'll see what happens. Then like, fuck it. Uh, like a month or so went by, and then I heard you sign with Bellator. Yeah, man. It's just, I don't know. It's just crazy. Is it with? With what the UFC was doing at the time, just the contracts that they were giving out that I was looking at, and I was just looking at just fair pay. I'm looking at, and the thing is, when I look at like pay and stuff like that, I'm looking at what guys right above me and right under me are getting paid, which is that's market value. Exactly, that's fair. That's like going to buy a used car, and then you know I'm saying you you have the exact same car, might be less miles, might be better. Than the the one ahead, you going for a hundred grand? Yeah, and they're like, dude, all can give you is forty. It's the same car. Yeah, 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 yeah. Matter of fact, I'm faster. You know what I'm saying? It's weird. So that's why I just didn't understand that. I was just like, I'm not asking for nothing crazy. I'm not asking for a, a just an out there number. And I'm just like, that's because I'm me. You know what I mean? <laughs> just like, make it work. Yeah, and I would say, know your your value, know your worth. And I think the UFC, I I don't think it's you. I think you know they know you're one of the most talented guys in the world at the welterweight division. You're you're gonna be champ eventually. I think they're just dealing with a whole lot of stuff. They have to do cuts. You can see all these cuts they're doing because mm-hmm. they, they you know from the Ultimate Fighter to certain fighters, and you, you see the staff getting cut down stuff like yeah. that. You were just in that turmoil, yeah. And they're just like, fuck, man, we got we got to do cuts. We can't offer yeah. him what he's worth. And I think they knew. You know, there's a good chance that someone's going to pay you what you're worth. Thank God. Yeah, yeah. Thank God there's a competitor out there who who sees your value and can actually help you out. So, I mean, at the end of everything, I'm glad that I tested it out, you know, and I'm glad that instead of me thinking it, you know, me taking a dumb deal and then being like, oh, I wish I would have done it, you know. See, a lot of guys are forced to do that. Though. Oh, a lot yeah, of guys aren't sure. in a position where, you know, they, they – 
they have your skill set and your your resume where they can go to Bellator and get this crazy deal. A lot of them are like, fuck. think about it. Think if you would have lost that fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, sure. that's like, fuck. And the UFC's like, yeah, I know, sucks right here. Oh, it's a big gamble. Yeah, that's how I say like. That's the that's the world we live in, though. Yeah, like, yeah, it's, yeah. It's a game. Every world. fight is like that. But, you know, especially you're doing that last fight in your contract. That, it's, it means everything. It I wish more guys did it. Yeah. I would, more, more guys because back in the day before they went through this WME thing, <clears throat> the UFC wouldn't let you get to your last fight in your contract. They wouldn't even think of letting a, a mainstream guy test yeah, yeah, the yeah. waters because they know you might get a good deal and go over there. Mm-hmm. They didn't even want to let you get to that point. Yeah. But now they're just they're dealing with so they're putting out so many fires mm-hmm. trying to figure things out. They're getting these yeah. fucking backlash from Reebok and this shit. So mm-hmm. it's just I think it's right now they're just a little overwhelmed. Yeah. I don't think it's a personal thing with you. I I really don't. I at least I like to tell myself that. Uh-huh. So then how was your uh, negotiates to deal with Bellator different? Because I've had Scott Coker in here. I'm not just saying it because, you know, Scott's, I mean, he's been great to me. But you know how it is working with promoters, yeah. man. Promoters yeah. are, when I say this, the worst. Oh, they're yeah, fuck, yeah. It's so, I mean, you're, a bit, you're, you're an elephant and they're the guy with the whip. And it's just once oh. you're fucking old and done, you're, heel, oh. you're out, man. You know, and a all lot of it, trying too, to do is, is like you, you're trying to talk to them. But like, oh, well, you should finish up the conversation with him. You know what I mean? They're like, nah, they just kind of. It's the worst. Cause Cause they yeah, don't want to yeah, deal yeah, with yeah. it head on. Oh, yeah, for sure. So how how was you, like, with Scott, my, my experience with Scott, and this is my nod to you, too, is you've dealt with Scott before in Strike Force. Uh-huh. And I feel like anyone who has had a history with Scott, and you see kind of this theme here, a lot of guys are signed with Bellator because they know what Scott's about and what he brings to the table. Yeah. So whenever I see a guy who comes from strike force or those days mm-hmm. and they know what scott's about yeah and they become free agents I'm like oh the ufc's a little screwed it's gonna be hard to match what scott brings to the table yeah i don't care who it is it's only because i never had i never had bad well i've never had bad issues with dana either but i never had bad issues with scott and strike force and, and i left on a good note and and my team like was talking back and forth with the bellator team you know and scott and it really just t- boiled down to I was going out to England, and I was actually Manchester for a fight with to uh, corner one of my buddies. And for a Bellator, card? no, for ACB. Oh, gotcha, yeah, yeah. And um, and I was in the airport, and I, I and I, I think he called me, and then we we're talking, and then we we're just, and then he was just pretty stressed, like, what do we gotta do to make this deal happen, you know? And I talked to him for twenty minutes, if that. And I told him, I was like, you have my word that once when it comes over, I'm signing it. And it was done. And did you have a number in mind? Like, what? Like, how's that conversation go down? Did you throw in some shit? Like, some random stuff? No. Like, man, right, this, just... this one might be a little weird. <laughs> yeah. It might be a little weird. I need all yellow Skittles. I need all yellow Skittles <laughs> yeah. at every locker room, all right? And then those ring card girls, I'm going to need them after. And then I'm also going to need, <laughs> it's going to sting a little bit, Ferrari, California, all right? Yeah. Like how's that go down? No nah, man, I just it was just a simple deal, six fight. I signed a six fight deal. And did you talk with your management before? Like, because a lot of times it can be tricky. Because you know, if a company wants to deal with me, they call me direct. Mm-hmm. I'll just yeah, I love this, this, and I, man, I'd love this. And they go, well, what do you think it's worth? My like, talk, to my management, man. Yeah, well, see, me and my management already had kind of a, a, a figure that we wanted to get to. We weren't there yet. Yeah, we're still below. You know. So one time I talked to him, I was just like, Dude, "This is it, you know. Like, you you you're going. You guys keep going back and forth with them, you know. But this is the number I'm at, you know. And and if this is good, then we're good. You have my word that there's no back and forth because they, you know, you, you also have to know that they don't want to risk throwing an offer, and then me running back with that offer to UFC and yeah, being like, man. well." Exactly. Can you guys, you know, what can this you do about this? This is what these guys are doing. Exactly. And and that that whole shenanigan keep going back and the forth. Worst. So I told them, you know, and I'm a, I'm a straight shooter. And, and, and that's the thing that I think with fighters that they love about Scott is he's just straightforward. Well, the, the other thing is, how about he called you and was like, what's up, man? Yeah. What do we got to do? Yeah, exactly. Like this day and age, you, you know, you're dealing with. You don't with, get that. Not, yeah. What? Yeah, you don't get now, that at all. But the, how simple is that? Yeah. Like how do people not, how do these other promotions not realize that or any business, if you're the head honcho, you having your assistant call or you having this matchmaker call or this, yeah. just do it yourself, especially when the best welterweights on the planet 
call them. See yeah. what's up, man. You don't have to talk exact numbers. Granted, mm-hmm. if you wanted to, but just call them. See where his head's at. Yeah. It goes so much further. Look, it was anywhere from what? I don't know. Like probably like a month of going back and forth. Maybe a little bit more to 20 minutes. And and when when it happened, did you have – was there any talk that – and I need a tile shot right no. away? No. It was just – I told him, you know, like just – Actually, we we're just talking about the contract. No, nothing, no, no like, potential matchups yeah, or anything no like nothing. that. So you signed the contract. The next thing you know, you got the call. Hey, Mass Square Garden, biggest pay per view of all yeah. time for Bellator, yeah. and you're fighting Douglas Lima for the welterweight mm. title. And the and the funny thing is, like, because I I mean I get up there pretty pretty good size when on my off time, you know, as far as like size. And shit. You like to eat? Yeah, yeah. So like, what do you like to eat though? Oh, dude. what are we talking? I don't about? eat healthy. Sh- no, like. Just saying, camp you eat healthy? Yeah. You look in shape right now, though? Oh, I'm in camp. You know? yeah, I'm you in full blown camp. Great. Yeah. Like, what do you walk around? Like, outside of camp, what do you walk around at? Uh, no, your boy was like, shh. But I, I walk around pretty big. We get down there, share shirts. Yeah, your, your boy doesn't look like he's turned out a happy <laughs> yeah, yeah. meal either. You know what I'm saying? Me, me neither, though. It's some big boys up in yeah, this room. No, I, get up, I, get, I get up there pretty good size. Like, what? You're not supposed to ask me to fire. Uh, you watch well, <laughs> well, it's like a girl. <laughs> no, no, I'm just saying. It's like, but you're not doing these crazy cuts. Like, you're not a guy who misses weight or anything I like think that. It, I think so it's you're, fun, yeah. you're good to talk about. You know yeah. what I'm saying? You get heavy. We'll leave it at that. Yeah, I get I get. But what's big. your go-to? I was like. <laughs> I like love eating? food, yeah. Oh, dude. So I could talk about this for hours. Bring it. Yeah. Because so I'm like, having just, a real hard time yeah. not leaving this interview after this and going to Susie Cakes, and they have a double Doozin sandwich where it's two cookies with icing in the middle. And I go, yo, girl, do you mind putting a little more vanilla ice yeah. in there? She goes, no problem, Brendan, and squeeze in there. I have a oh, real man. hard time not doing that every oh, day. See, it's I, a struggle. Like Del Taco, burger place, like hole-in-the-wall burger places. Oh, uh, preach. Famous Dave's. Yeah, why not? Oh, oh fuck. Barbecue? Dave's. Yeah. Fuck's sake. That. Or there's a, there's a, uh, candy, there's a, candy, the, candy. there's a, uh, Chicago, like it's called Chicago Pasta House. There's like Chicago South Pizza. Is it Riverside? It's in Murrum. Like right by Riverside. Word. It's like deep dish? Yeah, yeah, yeah. My mouth is salivating, Doug. Oh, yeah. It's like three pounds of cheese on there. I'm not mad at that. I love oh, cheese. It's, I'm it's like legit, a giant mouse. Legit. Love some cheese. You can and only it, do two slices. You do three. I've done three, but you hurt. Like it's like see I like that hurt it's a good hurt yeah yeah sometimes I'll throw up when Kentucky uh, when KFC came out with their uh, golden crispers you know the, the ad I forgot what it was it's like they, they got me it was like some Nashville golden crispers I was on this strict diet what's the crispers one they're like chicken tenders but it has like this golden sauce on them it comes with pickles oh, I've been dying okay. for them then finally I was like fuck it Postmates late at night it was mm. like seventy dollars to get this eighteen strip to my house I ate all of them at one setting. And then I was like, God, that's not healthy, man, but I feel all right. Fell asleep, woke up, and I just threw up everywhere. Oh, yeah? Yeah, I got a problem. Oh, yeah. I haven't thrown up. Not nah, food. Yeah, that's weird, man. Del Taco I love, a hard taco. They have the best hot sauce, too. Yeah. Oh, I'll fuck up Baker's. You like Baker's? You have a Baker's out here? What's Baker's? This is kind of, uh, it's, I guess, kind of like Mexican-ish, burger-ish. Like, kind of like an in and out slash Mexican-ish. Sounds terrible. It's, it's, really, like, no, it's like it's a really collab. Good. Mexican burgers? What are you? It's, it's, this is it's making not, me upset. I sell both Mexican yeah, it's, it's really it's really good though. So you can get like a taquitos and a grilled cheeseburger. Imagine Taco Bell cross with In and Out. Yeah, <sighs> there you go. That is mind blowing. Yeah, it's really good. Yeah, it's like a chain. I though. feel like Riverside's avatar in this bitch. Like it's <laughs> oh, yeah, so yeah, weird yeah. out there. You guys got it's tacos, really good. burgers. You ever heard of Alberto's? No. Damn! Look at you two. <laughs> this dude, your boy's upset. Yeah, I'll, What's Alberto's? It's just like a like a Mexican like restaurant. Have you heard of it, Chin? Yeah. Oh, okay. You heard of it, Ace? Uh, You've never I heard of it. Scared man. I was like Alberto's. Yeah. Uh. Uh-uh. Uh. Oh, dude, they have my like, girl's Mexican man. They, they don't have, like, let me super get... fry. Super fry. It's like carne asada, cheese yeah. with fries, sour cream. Yeah. That's about as Mexican as Cain Velasquez. That ain't Mexican, man. Uh, well, I'm not talking about authentic. I'm talking about like this is like late night, like after the bar. Oh, word. Word. Yeah, I hear you, man. Yeah, I, and I, you know, for for me, it's a struggle as well. I like yeah. that a guy that likes to eat. You know uh, what I'm saying? Yeah. But I think that's my, that's probably like my little, you know, like I eat so bad in my off time that once when it's in camp and I eat You're clean, strict as shit. It just, it I don't take you as like off. a boozer or a drug guy. 
No, I go out like it. Like in my off time, I'll go out and have big drinks. difference between going out and being a boozer and drunk oh, okay. guy, though. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like John Jones, drug or booze guy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like uh, two nights before a fight, he'll get loose and then no, beat the no, shit no. on somebody. So what I what I will say is like what I've always stuck to is like once I start camp, I won't have no alcohol. That's why you're one of the best welterweights in the world. Yeah, a lot of guys can't can't turn that switch on and off. Like, uh-huh. It's called discipline. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. Um, yeah, I don't. Food's really my only kind of. Achilles heel, you know, it's not women, it's not drugs. I don't, I'm, I don't drink at all. Uh-huh. Food though, fuck. Yeah, food is. A, I'll find myself cheating somehow, some way. But you, you seem to be on it. Yeah, it just, I just go overboard sometimes. Like, even if it's like fruit. I mean, too, man. I'll be like a fruit bowl, you know, and I'm like, oh, the whole bowl. How do I get? How do I go up in like five pounds, bro? Preach, you know. What I, I mean? know. I'm like, the, the other day, I've been so strict on my diet, running my ass off, working, working nonstop. I'm doing this Australia tour, trying to get that summer body, trying to roll up to Australia, looking like a goddamn savage kangaroo. Yeah. Been on it, man. And then I have these new neighbors. I moved. I went over like, oh my god, we baked you guys cookies. I was like, fuck, bitch. Oh, Whole plate of yeah. chocolate chip cookies, fresh baked. I smoked my weed pen last night. I'm watching an old episode of Cheers. Oh. Next thing I know, whole plate's gone. Yeah, that's, that's my good. life, dog. Have you had the Subway the cookies? Fucking neighbors. Yeah, the they're apple delicious. One? Have you had the apple? No, one? I have not. They, it was seasonal because I got pissed off because I went to Subway and I was like, oh yeah, let me have the apple. And they're like, oh no, we don't have it anymore. Seasonal? Yeah, it was seasonal. <laughs> I was like, shit. They had apple, they had apple. apple something. It's really fun. yeah. Well, so <laughs> the back to your fighting. I talk food all day, man. Yeah. Back to your fighting. So when you so when you let's say it all goes according to plan, and you know I'm fucking rooting for you like a motherfucker. You beat Douglas Lima, you knock him out with one of those fancy ass kicks you got. You, I mean, you're eating cookies after. That's the thing. You just blow the fuck up. Oh yeah, pretty much. Huh? That's how I like for an organization. Like they would want to keep me. Well, I mean, they don't really know about my problems, <laughs> but probably yeah, I, would yeah, say yeah, pro- yeah, probably. I would say problems. Yeah. It's not like you're like Lindsay. But no, Lohan, I, I try to keep like active. Because the more of time I have off, I know. Don't give me time off. Yeah. I get tattoos, especially just... like the press conference when we had in uh, in New York yeah. for the fight. Because it was funny. Because I, I seen it, like you know how you see you you see your opponent all the time, but I know because I had to do some promos with my shirt off, oh, shit like I hate that. that. And I was like, I, I had to diet to get to decent, you know, to yeah. decent follows. But I could tell that everybody, even everybody around Bellator, they're like. Like, Dude, damn, dog, you be is, good for June? Is, yeah, yeah, is Larkin going to make it? Wait, like, they kept asking, like, what are you walking around? I was like, I was like no, that's who not cares, important, dude. Man, who cares? He's like, just know I'll make weight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you sure you don't want to go against Fedor? You, do, yeah, you just right. switch him out? The little substitute just in case something happens. Between <laughs> How cool was it being, you know, signing with Bellator, getting treated the way you should be treated? Then you're at Mass Square Garden to a press conference. You got Vanderlei Silva, Chael yeah. Sonnen, Mitrione. Fedor, I mean, just that whole lineup is nuts. So, yeah. would you like this? Is yeah, man, this is why I've been doing this so long. Was it a sense of relief, or were you like, it still doesn't like it hasn't really kicked in? You know what I mean? Because it's like you've been saying, I, I have been flying under red. Like I've been like I'm more of your hardcore MMA guy. Like the I can't follow, figure it like, out. That's why the like the hardcore MMA guys they know like For they're sure. like they are always like, dude, like we see you, you know, but. I'm not really like the brand name, you yeah. Know? So it's it's a complete 180. It still it still like trips me out. Mm-hmm. Just being at home and you know getting a phone call like, you know, we know we wanted you to come out to Chicago, but can you come out to New York? We'll fly you out. Blah 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 blah. blah. I'm just like, uh, yeah. yeah. You know, like, it's just, how you should be it's completely different. You know, so it's still starting to set in. You know, I don't even think the Madison Square Garden thing is set in really. Until like it will when you get to that bitch. Exactly. That's what I I think, you know, once I'm in the back room and I'm like, oh the most legendary place. I mean yeah. you, there's no bigger f- But I think yeah, it's just it hasn't really kicked in yet. But I, I noticed the change completely. It's a complete different feeling, you mm-hmm. know. It feels like I don't know. It just feels And different. how do you feel about your matchup with Lima? I think it's good, man. I, I think it we're one of the I feel like the high anticipated fights of the you know the for, uh, sure. for the card you know because he brings it you know and and he's a good fighter he's has he has a belt for a reason and not only that you know he's lost the belt and came back and got it back you know so it's not like he's a slouch no hell and no. this is like a gimme fight at all no. you know so I'm just pumped that we're getting displayed on the right card mm-hmm. and you know they know 
what this fight is going to bring. You know, I mean, I think if you look at the card stylistically, I mean, we've seen, yeah, even though they're not on pay per view, you know, they're on the spike portion, but Phil Davis, Ryan Bader. Like that's a you, you realize like damn for a belt light heavyweight belt like yeah. that is that's such a good matchup two of the best light heavyweights in the world regardless what organization mm-hmm. those are you know you list it three and four in the world right yeah. there but it's not like we know that's not going to be like crazy entertaining mm-hmm. like let's be real here. yeah they, they yeah, fought yeah. before it's awful it's going to be better than the first time but that's still fun and then you, you look at the pay per view when I go through the pay per view Chandler always brings it so exactly. I love watching Chandler I think he's one of the best in the world. But then, you know, Chael versus Wanderlei, it, it should be a barn yeah. bird. It should be fun. You never know. You know, Chael's, you know, it's Chael. And then Mitrion and Fedor, that, that that thing ain't going distance. Yeah. But I look at your fight, and that's stylistically, skill-wise, matchup-wise, it's the best fight in the card. Mm-hmm. I'm not just saying because you're here. I think I said that before you came in. It's just such a good fight, man. Yeah, that's how I'm just like, it's just the whole card is crazy. Do you feel you know? more pressure than fighting no. the UFC? Because I feel oh. like now the spotlight's on you a little bit. Yeah, but I feel like I was just going to fights like all the same. Let's just get it, you know. Let's just get it, you know. So I think he has more, a lot more pressure. Just thinking of it, like I'm the guy, like I'm the new kid at school. Like I'm yeah. just like trying to figure out how shit goes, and yeah. you know, oh, this teacher. But like he's the guy who this is his like place. You know, this is his home for what eight years? Yeah. I think he said. So you know, he's the champ. He's the guy not trying to let the new guy. The quote unquote, the guy from the UFC, you know, come over and and take his belt. So I don't really have any. I can see pressure on both guys. I can see pressure from you because, you know, you say he takes things personal. I can see you be like, you fucked up, UFC. Check this out. Mm-hmm. Let's say you dismantle Lima. Like, there's a little bit of that pressure just to be like, I made the right choice, man. Yeah. I made the right choice. Like, I feel that pressure when I decide to retire from fighting. Like, everything I do. You know, I'm not saying it's the thing that drives me, but it's letting people know I made the right choice. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, yeah, the, in in a sense, there's some pressure, but I feel like even in fights, you know, I've always just fought. I'm just fighting. You mm-hmm. know, I'm not trying to be flashy. I'm not trying to do something that everybody's like, oh, shit, yeah. you know? It's just a, a fight, you know, that turned out to be something good for me you know which is which is interesting because you're one i was reading this correct me if i'm wrong are you one of six or seven children is that right yes i got a lot of brothers and sisters yeah and are any of them fighters no because i feel like and it depends where you're at in that order whenever you're one of seven one of six one of eight my dad was one of 13 you're you're vying for attention uh-huh. From, from the parents from the family so a lot of times it again it depends where you're at in that spectrum of age see all my all my older brothers and oh, I only have one younger brother, but all my brothers and sisters are way older than me. Way you know? older. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So like, I was I was always getting attention. Yeah, so, <laughs> so, yeah, that's so why like, you're because yeah, you're like, so nah, I'm good, like, man. Yeah, I just, yeah, I'm, I'm I just cruise good. and they yeah. pay attention. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So you don't have to vie for anyone's no, attention. No, no, no. So it was all. Good and is your, is your how's your family feel about you fighting and doing all that? My mom loves it. She loves it a little too much. You know, I gotta tell her like, you know, how so? How so? My mom's crazy, dude. Like to the point where. She just, you know, you have that. Well, it's just either you either have it or you don't. That mom that is just like, you have to keep eyes on. No. You know what I mean? Like she's like at the fights, man. She's just like I gotta watch like who tries to talk to her. You know, as far as like <laughs> any media or something yeah. like that. I'm like, hey, yeah, she's not. She's not. <laughs> no, like, she's we'll, good, man. Like, what were you gonna ask her? <laughs> you know, like, yeah, I need to. Run by me first. Oh yeah, exactly. I remember one time too in Strike Force. They're always getting like Woodley's mom on on <laughs> camera, and she's like the super church, church goer, you know. Yeah. And I'm just like, and I always used to look at those fights like, hell no, no hell yeah, I won't. They're not getting my mom, you know. You've seen Pacquiao's mom on pay per view, yeah. So you fucked up. Exactly. Now we know her as the crazy voodoo lady. But she's doing this weird thing. She has a doll, he's putting pins in and it. Now he's every black, single time, put yeah, pins yeah. in when he's fighting Floyd Mayweather. But every single time he fights, I guarantee you they will find her. Every time, but, yeah, I don't. It's, it's she, a, some, of a lot of times, she's more entertaining. It's exactly. weird, man. So that's that's my that's my fear, you know. So that's why I was always like, "Nah, mom, you're." They're kidding. like, you know, where's she sitting at? Let's bring her. I was like, no, don't worry about she's it. Okay, don't she's worry about there. it. You just worry she didn't say some outlandish shit. Yeah, dude, she just she's not that tech savvy yet, you know. So she's just like she'll try to talk to me about discussions she sees on like <laughs> Facebook about fights. Oh no, she's like, what do you think about? You oh know? no, and then she'll be like. These people invited me to come check out this stuff. I'm oh, like, no, mom, mom, 
every they invite everybody. Yeah, don't. But she thinks you know, like yeah. she's the mom that uh, when somebody likes her comment, she'll go in the comments and then she, or like her post, she'll thank everybody. <laughs> so like in her comments, she has it like, just thank you, da da da. <laughs> Thank you for the and then thank you da 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 and I'm just like it doesn't work like that you know I hate that what parents are on social media oh, it's man. the worst what the fuck are they doing on social yeah. media so it my dad worst. you know my dad loves it now your parents together no okay They're divorced. divorced but my dad at first he didn't like it because he was, was hesitant right because you start off boxing yeah and even that I was just a gym rat I couldn't. Uh, he wouldn't sign off for me to do like a amateur boxing license. Your dad wouldn't. He didn't oh. want you to go to that lifestyle. What do he want for you? He just wanted me to go to school, so, you know, and, and finish out school. But he, like, I, I even was in football too, you know. But I sucked at it because he wouldn't allow me to play, like Pop Warner. Damn, damn. So I was, I was in flag. You know what I mean? Yeah, damn. Which is like, come on. I know it's so late. So you know when your I dad just protected. Oh, super. Protective. Does he have an athletic background? He played football. There you go. I'm what the same I, way. I played football. Yeah. I have a 15 month old son. He ain't played football okay. unless he's some freak. Like, if he starts juking little kids, I'm like, all right. Yeah, but see, go. my older brother played football, too. So I'm just like, what happened? And he's fine? Yeah, he's fine. Yeah, I don't but, know. But um, maybe because you're the baby. Uh, maybe. He was just real protective. So, And then when I finally got to play football, I was in high school, and I'm out there spinning my ass <laughs> off, you know, getting cracked Barry by Sanders all my boys, you know, that played Pop Warner all yeah. American. But I'm just like, dude, I'm out here thinking there's flags on me, yeah. spinning in football pads in Hell Week, and they're just... <laughs> Running me over. So anyway, that was. I never played after that. That was. Just and like, then you just started to focus on. Yes, I did boxing, but I never was able to go to shows on the weekends. You can do smokers or like amateur fights or no, anything. no amateur Your fights. Your parents let you sign off. So on. um, I was just a gym rat, and then I'll sneak off on. Uh, was I think it was like Thursdays. It was sparring and like the other gyms, but I was practice. You know yeah. what I mean? So I was going Your dad there. Didn't know. But yeah, man, boxing was tough, man. But it, I think it kind of built me to. I was just a gym rat, Al. I got to it's do a good strength. foundation to have. Oh, I think. for sure. So then, once I was able to, I, I just went full board. Just went for it, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Well, dude, I uh, we've wanted you on the show for a while, and I just you look at your resume, man, and you just you're one of those guys where it's like about time. You know, there's a lot of Thanks, guys. Man. You know, especially, I, and I hope you get that belt. And I think you're going to, man. You know, if if you show up like you always do, the, there's certain guys in this game. Where like, God, I, I hope it works out, man. Mm-hmm. I really do. Like, there's. There's the guys who everyone roots for, and if you just look at your story, and you're similar with the Diaz brothers, where especially Nate, who he's been up and down, up and down. Yeah, and we yeah. we like him, we like to watch him fight, and just hoping he gets his due. And you know he got his, and you know, I think there's another big fight for him. But you're the same guy, man. And uh, I, I was stoked when he signed with Bellator. I oh, really was because I, I think there's a lot of growth for you there. I think you're the recognition you deserve. Mm-hmm. You know, in this weird UFC game, you know it's tough right now to bust out. But oh yeah, I think it was a smart choice man and we'll be rooting for you and uh i appreciate you coming on brother oh thanks for having me man i know a lot of people are gonna be hitting me up like it's about damn time yeah, <laughs> yeah it's about and, they, time. and they can find you on uh obviously instagram twitter it's just at yeah at da underscore monsoon boom da monsoon it's easy yeah where's that come from for you the other it's 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 supposed to be the but somebody took the god damn it so they it took screwed me all up yeah i hear you i hear you All right, man. We appreciate you coming in. Lorenz Larkin, everybody. All right. There you have it. Lorenz Larkin, ladies and gentlemen. He's uh, he's just a good dude, and I I just I want him to get what he's worth, and it sounds like that's happening. And, uh, you know, let's all root for this guy come June 24th on uh, Bellator's pay-per-view against Douglas Lima. I think it's a good matchup for him. And one thing you can say about Lorenz Larkin, he's never had a born fight. He came to Rain Training Center to train with us one time. You know, it's a room full of grapplers and wrestlers predominantly. And I, I saw, you know, Pat Cummings, Ishii, uh, Mark Munoz, myself. We all could not get this guy down. Well, I was so impressed in his angles and his footwork and his background. He's just a nightmare. So I've always been a fan of him and, uh, I, I think he's making a smart choice here. So I'm excited to see what the future holds for that guy. Uh, the future for me, for moi, enough about Larkin. He's going to be all right. Big Brown going down under. Yeah, I'm finally I'm finally headed down under. You, you keep those koalas with your chlamydia and those kangaroos who are all jacked and those alligators who love them some big brown meat. You keep them off of me, Australia. I'm coming down there. Brisbane, Melbourne. Auckland and Sydney. 
boom, just like that. Tickets go on sale May 11th. I will blast everything out, but uh, the interaction on social media is insane. You Australians are crazy. It's going to be fun. We got some cool stuff lined up. Uh, long ass plane ride, so hopefully it's a good time. Um, hopefully I do see a great white shark, but it's not eating me. It's attacking someone else, and there's good food. I've been promised good coffee. Uh, but I'm looking forward to it, man. Those tickets will go on sale May 11th. I'm excited to get that get out there and see you guys. And, uh, yeah, first time traveling that far, so I'm a little nervous about it. I mean, I've been to Brazil. Uh, this is a little different. But um, I think it's going to be good. Everyone swears by it and says how good of a time it is in Australia and the fans are crazy. So hopefully we make this a once-a-year thing if, if all goes accordingly planned. And, Perth, listen, I see you guys. I see the comments. My agent management, my team reached out to me and was like, dude, Perth is nuts. I don't pick the cities. Don't hate, don't hate me. Don't hate the play. I hate the game. Don't hate the game. But, um, yeah, I mean, it would, like, we won't have a short amount of time. They pick the dates. And don't worry, I'm coming back. And I promise you Perth will be on when I come back. But yeah, for sure fly to one of the other cities, though. Why would I have to fly six? For sure fly to the other one. So we, you quit harassing me. We'll figure it out, though, because, you know, I'm flying 14 hours. So for you to fly whatever it is, three, four, five, I'm for sure fly. And quit blowing up my Twitter and Instagram, Perth. I love you guys. But uh, quit hit me up. I'm not coming there yet. And you pick any other city. All right? Love you guys. And then we're doing the Australia Big Round Breakdown on it Collab T exclusively. We're going to release it first on tfatk.com. And then uh, so you guys have access to it early so you can get it before the shows. Then we have them also available at the live shows. And that is just for Australia. I mean, I guess you could buy them if you're in L.A. or something like that. But that's Australia's shirt. Save it for the Australians, you know? So, um, yeah, and I'll blast all that out. It's cool to get cool shirt. And my boy, Average Joe, uh, helped me design that one. He also did the poster work for that. So looking forward to that. And then stay tuned because I have some big news coming up for that June 24 card uh, in New York. And also a Big Brown Live is coming to New York City. New York City. All right, guys, wish me luck tonight at the Comedy Store. I'm already nervous about it. And uh, I think that's it. Till next time. I'm Brendan Shaw, bigger, badder, browner. Thanks for listening. I'm out.